Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim, caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble. Three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is our weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition game with the Dungeon Dudes. That's me, Dungeon Master Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. I'm going to be playing Sebastian Crow, the Half-Elf Shadow Sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends... Jill Denitis playing Veo Senya, the Tabaxi Gloomstalker. And Joe O'Gorman playing a human battlemaster named Pluto Jackson. Thank you so much for joining us once again. When last we left our heroes, they had set deep underground through the sewers of Drakenheim, finding unprecedented levels of opposition in the form of a deadly gelatinous cube. <laughs> Veo, Sebastian, and Paluto opted to retreat from the sewers and head back to the rat's nest to recruit the assistance of the rat prince, the rat folk leader who they had let survive in their very first expedition together in the city. The rat prince, believing the three heroes to be possessed by the ghosts of some sort of future <laughs> prophet of their profane god. As convinced by the group, the Rat Prince agreed to lead the possessed bodies, so-called possessed bodies, of our heroes through the sewers to a way that might get them deeper into the city of Drakenheim. For their ultimate goal is to reach the very heart of Drakenheim, Market Square, where the clock tower resides. This was formerly the lair of Veo, of Veo uh, but the clock tower has been taken over by harpies. Ugh, rude. So, now that they have ventured partway through the sewers, they believe they might be underneath the temple gate, just under the city walls itself. And after solving a puzzle of the gate control of the sluice gates of the sewers, mm -hmm. defeating some ghouls, uh, and securing this area, you are left at a crossroads. Where will you press on? You are currently in this underground complex that you suspect might be underneath Temple Gate itself. However, some sort of creature has burrowed in. That's how you got into this area, through a rough tunnel that the Rat Prince had discovered. So the collapse of this tunnel has caused the staircase that leads up into Temple Gate to be fully caved in. So unless there are some means of moving some heavy stone and rock, um, your options for getting up into Temple Gate, which you've also heard is overrun by gnolls, are pretty limited. That said, the way ahead of you was flooded, but now that you have reactivated the sluice gates here the sewer line going forward is no longer flooded and you can continue forward if you wish now it looks like I mean we have a pretty sturdy door behind us I know we were a bit worried about that other creature that might be potentially back mm -hmm. um, but is this a point where we potentially might be a little bit safe from from dangers where we could rest a little bit? I mean, I even think uh, there's the mm -hmm. door that leads to the room where we fought the ghouls, and yeah. in there is another door that leads to four beds. Um, might be a nice place to chill out. There's a nice table there that was covered in bones and dead bodies. Uh, we can have a little picnic and uh, rest for the night. Yeah, I'm just a bit worried. So you guys are planning on bedding down in this area? Well, um, inside the city walls, uh, I know that there's supposed to be a lot of haze. Yes, that's correct. The haze suffuses the upper levels of Drakenheim um, and the inner city itself. The haze itself, Veo, you know, it is a toxic, 
gas, an emanation from the delirium itself. Yeah. And it suffuses almost all areas of the city. And for you, for the longest time, the clock tower was one of the few safe places there. It's okay to be exposed to the haze for a little while. But long-term exposure, usually anywhere in a few hours to a day or so, can cause extremely debil debilitating effects. And this is represented in game, as all of you are familiar with, by the fact that while you're in an area of the haze, taking a long rest does grants you no benefits. So yeah, if we're planning to venture into the city on a long journey to the center of it, uh, even though we're mostly okay right now, I think it would just be a good idea to kind of boost ourselves up to as full as we can be before making this trek, uh, just because it's going to be dangerous. The road ahead is going to be dangerous, and um, you want to get some snacks before we. Go I want to eat some big road trip. Have some snacks, but definitely I think we should be at our best, mm -hmm. especially if we're potentially going to be, you know, when we get to my my tower, my hideout, going to be fighting some harpies. Um, they're pretty nasty, so I just want to make sure that if we can get to that point, if we're already like low, then that probably even getting to the tower is going to be pretty hard on us. So. I mean, also, the fact is, there's literally a room with beds, and if we take a rest <laughs> later, uh, it's going to be in the middle of a sewer. Um, I'll now, take... it is a room also covered in consumed entrails and bones that several ghoul corpses are still I inside. Mean, it's going to get a how... low rating on a, on our Airbnb, <laughs> but we'll still accept it. Like Airbnb. A... What are you talking Airbnb? about? Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, but I one mean, star. How many? Sure. How many? How long have we been in Drakenheim now? I feel like a bed's a bed at this point. Like you know, I'm used to seeing guts and blood and entrails wherever I go. Uh, we kick dead bodies just for fun. Uh, at this Not point, for I mean, fun. It's a right of. It's like a ritual. That's it's right, Pluto. Sure. That's right. <laughs> it's part. It's like a. Uh, it's, it's your culture. But I feel like I feel like Sebastian's already kind of given up on the fact <laughs> that like when he came here, he was like. I like my beds and my fancy linens. And now he's just like, hey, look, a bed. It's covered in blood. Better than the sewage floor. <laughs> We've changed him so much. So your plan then is to take a long rest here in this area before pressing forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, as you discuss this, the rat prince chimes in and says, we keep going, yes? Yes? Do you sleep? I am nocturnal. I sleep at night, yes. Or during sleep the during the day, yes, yeah. yes. It's 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 these darn mortal bodies. Yes. Us but I ghosts, thought you ghosts. Us ghosts do not require sleep. It is the it is this fleshy corpse that seems to need sustenance. Oh yes, humans very very weak, tasty but very very weak. I agree. They're not strong at all. Yes. And you know how you can help us, uh, you know, ghosts in these mortal bodies is by finding sustenance for us. So that way we don't have to waste our sustenance on our long journey. You need eat, yes? Yes. What about all the cheese I gave you? Yes, yes, yes. That's You for like all the cheese? Later. <laughs> all the cheeses? I love all the cheeses. You eat that? Yes, it's good, 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 good. Okay, fine. I'll eat Some my for own me? cheese. I'm already Some for eating me. it. We we should. You share. You share. Yes, I will share be because you have day. been such a good guide down here for the ghosts as well. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 I go forward. I find more food. Yes. Yes. yes, uh, yes. Don't go. Don't go too far. We need you back here safe. Oh yes. You going to make sleeps now? Yeah. I yes. have a question for the great rat prince wh where would you lead us to next we go forward 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 through the sewers yes 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 where you want to go where you want to end up we want to get as close to the middle of the city as possible oh middle of the city market square oh market many old foods there yes yeah many tasty things were once there I remember as little rat now, if we go that way, yes, yes, I lead you, Market Square. Yes, yes, yes. I know the way through the sewers, yes? Is it far? Not far, 
but things different now. You open those gates, you're very smart, you figure them out. Yes, yes, yes. We not have to swim now, so we go much, much faster. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So, yes, we need we need sustenance. Good, loyal follower of the, you know, rat gods, minions. Go forth and get me food. Okay. So, the with that, the rat prince ventures down the stairs into the sewer proper as it is draining out. You can hear the rushing of water still coming from below as the ba- uh, the buildup of water and sewage that has been accumulating down here for probably close to 15 years is starting to wash out. And as it goes by, the smell kind of coming up from that <laughs> staircase <laughs> of like the stagnant water does kind of rush mm. through and you could hear it. It's pretty overpowering, the sound at first. But after a little bit of time, as you begin to make your accommodations and given the way that the area is laid out, you're able to find quite enough rest here. What is your plan for bedding down? Um, so if we go into this room with the big metal door that we were in with the ghouls, we can at least shut that. Yep. We um, can shut that. We can like, I don't know, hang out, have a chat at this table and then go into the other room, shut that door. Um, do you think that we should take turns, like one of us just sitting at that table keeping watch? I think we should definitely have a watch. Will that mean we all don't get a long rest though? If you stagger your watches, yep. that's okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, I think if we do that. Who wants fine. first watch, second watch, and third watch? I can do first. I'll do second. I'll do third. Okay, so Vea will be taking the first watch. Yeah. Okay. Who is taking the second? Uh, I'll take the second, and um, I'm thinking too. We should, we should probably barricade the door. Do you want me to like move earth to put some rubble? Well, we so can close it, the door and we can, um, because it opens out. Oh, shoot. Yeah, it opens. Yeah, because it was, uh. Yeah, it opens out. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, we don't. Just keep watch. Yeah. Just. <laughs> we'll just be very well, quiet. Well, can we put some of the supplies from the secondary room in front just to block it? I know it opens out, but at least it they'll have to make noise to come over it, Yeah, right? true, yeah true, that's true. a good idea. What if it's the rat prince that comes back? Well, then one of us will be awake to yeah. not shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> we should have given him a password before we sent him off. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is assuming that he makes it back, too. That's why I was kind of getting a little bit out of him. Like, so which way would you go? Like, take a left? Take a right? <laughs> like, just in case. Draw it on this piece of paper. <laughs> mm, you know, the little subtleties of yeah, the sewer. I think about it, sending him off uh, might alone. be kind of dangerous. Now he just that he, went off alone. And he's he, never been in the sewer before without the water. Well, I mean, he'll sort it out. My thing is, if he doesn't come back and we find him later, he's toast. What if we find him later and he's in trouble? Okay, well, that's a different story. Or dead. But I mean, if he just leaves us, he will get the wrath of the ghosts. No, I'm not worried about his uh, loyalty. I, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's, he's loyal to us. We're, we are his gods. That's or his the heralds of his gods. Heralds of the gods. All yeah, right. so I think we have, okay. we have a pretty airtight plan with zero seams. All right. I exposed. Let's, uh, like let's see to the watches. So, we get to use my fun little rules for resting and watches. <laughs> so here's how it's going to work. Each of you on your watch are going to roll me a d6. And I'm also going to roll a d6. And based on those results of your die rolls and mine, something may or may not happen. Mm. You're in a pretty safe area, but we'll still see what things might emerge. And in general, for those of you following along on stream, low rolls are bad and high rolls are good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... As per D and D, as as is their custom. Okay, so Veo, you are taking the first watch. I am. As Sebastian and Pluto bed down, and you take your seat, what do you do with yourself during the watch? Um, I'm not too concerned with like entertaining myself. Um, I'm just gonna set up a chair at the end of the hallway, facing the door with my crossbow ready, almost like an old, like, gunslinger <laughs> watching. 
Um, because I don't trust what could come down here. So okay, I'm ready. I got a six. You got a six. <laughs> okay. So a few hours pass into your watch, and through the window, through the doorway. You start to hear a low shuffling and a dragging sound. What sounds like something grunting. Going, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and then you hear a thick pounding on the door. Do I recognize this grunting? Give me a perception check. Sixteen. It sounds like the rat prince. I keep my position. This time, actually, I stand up instead of sitting down, and I say, "Who goes there?" Oh, oh, cat, cat ghost is me. Is rat prince? Yes. Did you bring my food? Oh, you come see it. Very, very special. Yes. Okay. If there's anything out there, I have I have my crossbow pointed, so oh, no, no it's surprises. Safe. It's safe. Okay, and I approach the door to open it slightly. Okay, as you open the door, it opens. You can see on the ground at first there is a giant fish head. <laughs> it is easily the size of a human head, and as the door opens up, you see this fish that has deep gashes that the rat prince has made into it. The fish has arms and legs <laughs> and is the size of a person. <laughs> is it still alive? No, it's very dead. Oh, good. But okay. It has oh. human-like arms and legs. See, this is what comes out of the river. This does not <laughs> surprise me at all. <laughs> Aren't you glad you went swimming that one time? <laughs> oh... Oh wow! You its you tail really... kind of flops a little bit with a death spasm oh. as the rat prince kicks it and says, "Oh yes, this big dinner, yes. This is cat like. You like fish, yes, yes, yes. This is my favorite thing. Thank you. You are I please the rat god so much. <laughs> oh, you can even have the eyeballs if you want. Oh, eyeballs so good. Delicacies. I like them on bread. You yes, yes, yes. Yeah. If I can get bread, but yes, generally, if I can accomplish bread within my meals, yes. All right, let's drag this thing in here and close the door so that way nobody hears. Okay, the rat prince and Veo, the two of you together, drag this gigantic fish man into the room. It <laughs> smells so bad. <laughs> um, and th- as I said, it has human arms and legs and is wearing a loincloth. <laughs> it has a fish head, so I'm good with it. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> It doesn't phase me that the rest it's, of the body parts don't scales are look. kind of a glimmering <laughs> blue purpley color. Yeah. Um, what do you do? Um, first of all, um, I say, Rat Prince, watch the door. So that way. Oh, yes, yes. Something happens. Just There were squeak. many more. You want me to get more? Not right now. I think this is good for now. Okay. Yeah. But okay, later, yes. you let me know where you got this because I'm going to need this later. Um, I actually start to pick there off some. There were many, of- many. Ooh. They all down in the sewer tunnel ahead. Oh. They seem very, very confused. I sneak up on one, grab him, and bring him back for dinner. Oh. Well, that, I'll, I'll definitely have to tell the others about that fact that there are fish men in the sewers. We probably need to avoid them since we yes. probably stole one of their friends Mer-man. and family. I very, very carefully, yes. Very, very sneaky, like ghost. I learn from you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Maybe yes. you'll become a ghost one day. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> then I would have to die. <laughs> yeah, but then you'll be eternal ethereal spirit uh you know that sound rather unpleasant oh, oh it's great okay well i start to pick off some of the scales because i'm like i can make something cool with this maybe sell it's shiny could be like delirium you never know as you inspect the scales you can see that there are actually pieces flakes and pieces of delirium embedded on the creature scales hmm. Yeah, we might be able to use this for a little bit of research in our project. That'll be something good to trade. Um, how many scales do I can I take off? With the rest of your wa- watch, if you want to spend your time skinning and gutting this gigantic fish man. 100% because uh, 
on the uh, last watch, we're going to get some barbecued uh, fish man so, <laughs> with uh, some fire, right? Yeah. It's very strange. The, f- the fish parts of the fish man are fishy, but the arm parts of the fish man are Sorry. not. <laughs> it's not like I haven't seen, you know, men can arms all off? around the city. Can we cut this off before? <laughs> yes, we can. That's what I work on. <laughs> I'm just deassembling and I'm making sure that the fillets are ready to go. To a That'll be your job. You, yeah. you dismember it. I cook it. <laughs> she okay. guts it. Yeah. Okay. So I get it ready. And then I... Uh, I then, um, you know, take the scales, put them away, and wake Pluto up for his watch. Okay, Pluto, you wake up, and Veo has gutted this gigantic <laughs> fish. It's a fish. And there's four, and there's two humanoid arms and legs <laughs> over on the side of the room <laughs> that look like they might have been attached to this gigantic fish. <laughs> Do you tell them that they were attached? Uh, no, I'm at this point, I'm like... That was a load, and I, like, I still have fish guts all over my hands, and I just pat your arm, and I'm like, your turn, <laughs> and I go to bed. It smells okay. awful. <laughs> <laughs> the rat prince go, uh, looks at you and goes, I do good, yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah, this is fin- this was you? Yes. Fantastic. I find him down in the sewers. Kill him. Bring him back. We eat, yes. Wow. Uh, and and he, did he put up a fight? Oh, yes, very much. He got me right here. And he points oh, to like no. a scratch on his side. Um, he had a spear and a knife. Yes. Where where are they? Oh, there are many of them f- further up in the sewer. Okay. I not go too far before I find them. Okay. Um, well, as a reward, are, can you eat these arms and legs? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reward you with you the, give to the me? delicacy. <laughs> yeah, please <laughs> eat them quickly. <laughs> um, it's a... He takes them and starts eating them right in front of you, raw. I as, It's disgusting. There's blood everywhere. As disgusting as it is, it just helps me kind of look at the fish in a new light. I'm trying <laughs> to just separate it from the humanity of <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and the loincloth. I definitely get rid of the loincloth. <laughs> I'm going to throw it in the corner or something. I don't want it to... <laughs> okay. Roll your d6. Is there anything else you'd like to do during your watch? Um, I'm going to continue preparing the... Uh, fish man okay. <laughs> to be more fish than man uh, big old six okay I roll a one Ooh. alrighty and I'm just kind of like sitting on a chair at the table just working on it with like kind of like an eye on the door but also working away at this fish the rat prince has devoured the ar- one of the arms and goes into the other room and is now sleeping as you consider, continue to work. A few hours later, you hear what sounds like tumbling rock and crumbling masonry coming from the hall beyond. So just outside the door? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put I'm gonna approach the door. And mm-hmm. I wanna put my my head to the door. I wanna try to listen closer. It's a rhythmic bang. You can hear this chung, chung, chung. And then collapsing rock. And some sort of strange droning noise. Like a... Accompanied it in the hall beyond. Hmm. Can I tell which way it's coming from? You're on the other side of the door? So I'm on this, yeah. Yeah. It's coming from the cavern. Interesting. Interesting. I'm so noisy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to disturb the rest, but I also... Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna take my place back at the at the table. Okay. And I'm gonna keep uh, keep an eye on the door. The droning is getting louder, and the crashing is getting more frequent. And all of a sudden, there's a massive burst, and it sounds like you heard the sound of tumbling masonry and 
uh, falling gravel, like there was a collapse coming Ooh. from the caverns. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna prepare myself for combat, and uh, I'm gonna go wake up the rat prince. Okay. You hey, kick him. Ah! ah! No! <laughs> no! Cat! Get away! Get away! And he, he wakes up. Oh! 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 <laughs> Chainy ghost. What you need? You wake me. I'm sleeping, having dream. Uh, I hope you had a restful sleep. All <laughs> not really. No, you interrupted <laughs> it. But it's okay. It's okay. Look, I have a very important question for you. Yes, yes, yes. I need you to tell me more about the monster of the cavern. Oh, the monster! It makes crashing noises, and as it says that, you hear this crash, crash, <laughs> crash, and banging noises, and you hear a bang, bang, like that? bang. Like yeah. those? Oh! He's a monster. Oh, it's come back to its cave. Hmm. What do we do? We wait. Oh! He's terrible. The eyes, the claws. Oh! And he, he climbs up in the corner of the room and is shuddering. Ghost, ghost, you must save us! You have to be quiet, and you have to stay here. Oh, okay. And I'm going to go back into the room, and I'm going to sit down in my chair. No, actually, I'm going to stand at the corner. I'm going to, like, sit, like, off the edge mm -hmm. and just be around the corner. So when you look into the room, you don't see me, but I'm just kind of sitting there waiting, listening for anything from the door. Okay. You hear these crashing noises. Crash. Crash more tumbling masonry. It sounds like the rock is being moved and shaped around, and you continue to hear this low droning noise. It almost is like the horn of a ship um, in, its, in, in its resonance, and it's echoing down the hallway quite loudly. I'm, I really don't want to disturb... There's another thunderous crash. Sebastian and Bayo, it awakes the two. I was going to say, are we hearing these noises? I'm like, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just calmly sitting in the room. <laughs> Sandwiches! Oh my gosh! Uh, what? And I come out and I'm just like, what are these noises? Why didn't you wake us? Uh, I assumed it was just, you know, you know when like houses get cold in the winter? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, this could be normal here. Could I be. come out and I see the fish and the severed limbs. <laughs> and and just the kinda, rat prince is huddling in the corner. Yeah. And I'm just like, what did I miss? <laughs> oh, we were prepping dinner. Uh, yeah. This is, this Are is those a... human arms and legs? No, they're just mutated arms and legs. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> is that dinner? Yes. Dibs on the leg. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like cannibalism. It's this a fish. Leg. I don't know if I, I guess in the, like there's like frog legs, fish legs, yeah, like new, Del I, <laughs> new delicacy. I'm not asking questions. Anyways, uh, focus we, not on yeah, food. Do you hear What's the crashing? It's hard for me. But. Yeah, there's some crashing happening outside. I've been just trying to ignore. I didn't want to worry you two. Sh should we be quieter? I mean, quieter than that. I think we're we're good. Grr, 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 grr. Uh, I thought about looking at it, but I didn't want to uh, alarm you guys. You look so tired. Yeah. Thank you. I haven't fully gotten my rest yet. I, I say that we waited out. Yeah. Like, it might not come in here. Why would it come in here? I mean, it never came in here before. Um, does it sound animalistic or machine-like? Whatever it sounds like, it's very alien. This concerns me. I, uh, it does not sound like a natural wailing noise. I I go up. Uh, so you're kind of hidden around the corner here. Yeah, I'm just kind of like leaning against the wall. I come and I lean against the wall opposite and kind of look at you and I'm like, I'm just going to chill here for a bit. I mean, Veil, it's pretty dark in here, so... Technically, I don't think it would be able to see you. What I was thinking is, I can, uh, I can take my rest now, but with you two awake, we could also go check out the monster. However, I'm okay with. I mean, if letting we, it. 
bygones be bygones. Yeah, it, to be honest, like, if it's going, if it's going to come in, it's going to come in. We could at least, like, I know we're not probably not going to rest with all this noise. That's the only problem. Is, like, if we're not going to rest, we might as well go. But I think we... Oh, wait, yeah, if you need your rest, uh, here, one second. And I go and I break off two of the fingers from the fish hands. And I'm like, use these as earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> as you go to pass those two him there's another crash and a chunk of masonry hits the door smashing it to pieces oh well that big oh my god across the way you can see something throwing bits of rock and as the masonry drops across and shatters the the opening you can see that, you can hear that whatever this creature is, is trying to dig up the stairs. Oh. Hmm. Sneak attack? I, I don't know why we want to get involved with this. I, it doesn't know we're here. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's, what's in Temple Gate. It's just a bunch of gnolls, right? Yeah, it would be filled with gnolls. So I'm gonna do one of the SEAL team things to Veo, like <laughs> I use mold earth to make words appear in front of you on the on the uh, ground that say what are you saying? <laughs> I'm just like what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Go look for it. No, <laughs> Why would I potentially make it see us? Uh, it doesn't know we're here yet. Um, okay, then I'm gonna go to bed, and I start <laughs> slinking off towards the to the towards the room. <laughs> um, have a good night. <laughs> you just like slowly like close the door. <laughs> okay, make a stealth check. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. Okay, wait. I'm I'm over here. I'm not really in the middle. <laughs> Don't put me in uh, the 14. Okay. The door closes with a slam. <laughs> Can I time it to one of the slams? It is not. It is not. Oh, oh no. It's and like, all of a sudden the slams stop. And you can hear these heavy footsteps <laughs> trundling across the masonry towards the broken door. I'm going to open the door and be like, guys, that was r- why were you so loud? Wait, can, <laughs> can you make a door out of stone and just... Wait, um. And as it comes down <laughs> the hallway, you can see this strange beast. It is covered in shitness plates of opalescent purple, blue, and green, and gray. It's arm. It's it has these elongated forearms that look like they might be rounded, like big, almost bicep-like forearms that end in massive plated claws. It's hunched over, and the shell comes up over its shoulders, almost like it's got a hunched back, and it has sectioned insectoid-like heavy lower legs that lumber like those of a rhinoceros. And its face is mandibled and has sectioned eyes that gleam. And as it comes around the corner, you see these flashing lights coming from its eyes, flashing in opalescent colors of octarine and the delirium glow. Roll for initiative. (laughs) A question, is it dark in this room? It is dark in this room, but the creature's eyes are flashing with light. Ah, okay. Do, do, do. You guys need to be way quieter when things are around. <laughs> like, it's a little... <laughs> clunk, clunk, clunk. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really tried to ignore it. I really did. <laughs> yes. Seeing as I just woke up, up I'm not very high on initiative. I'm like still like, I don't even know what's going on right now. I'm... What did you get, Sebastian? You got sleeping. your I eyes. got a six. 
You're still rubbing? <laughs> You're like, oh. I'm still like looking at the legs and arms being like, like are these making You got a six? Yeah. Fail? Twenty. Twenty? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Okay. Not to be confused with that. Uh, we will uh, do one uh, uh, tie-off roll. I need a tie-off roll. Well, I, I need two. <laughs> okay, I got a six. So, oh. <laughs> I win. <laughs> Yay. Woo. So we'll have Sebastian, Pluto, the Tunneler, Veo goes first. Oh, the Tunneler, that's nice. Okay. Maybe he's just an engineer. Where is this beast? The beast. It's like a giant cockroach. That's what I envision. Oh, no. Oh, he's out there. Okay. Yep, he's right there. So... <clears throat> as it comes for uh, it comes forward down the hall and maybe I'll just kick up the camera a little bit hope that lets everyone see what's going on the terrible beast with its opalescent eyes glow down the hallway Vale you're the first one to act however you are within range of its confusing glare. <gasps> and I need you to make a charisma saving throw. Um, okay. <laughs> charisma. Uh, oh, Ooh. I got a one. <laughs> so <laughs> you see these, this opalescent flashing light from the creature's eyes, and it is mesmerizing and confusing. <laughs> I need you to roll a... You cannot take reactions. Okay. I need you to roll a d8. An eight. Okay. So you scream. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, um, and. It's that cat scream. <laughs> <laughs> and begins swiping in the air as if atta- almost attacking towards Sebastian with your, with your claws. Um, <laughs> Technically, what? my claws yes. aren't very. You, you uh, try to make a melee attack, uh, melee attack against a random creature, but no, nothing is within your reach. So that is your action, but you can still move. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to start to back towards uh, the farthest corner that I can go because I'm just freaked okay. out by this thing. I'm just like, <laughs> luckily my okay. Unarmed strike does no damage, so even if I did hit you. <laughs> I see you do this, and I'm just like, what? what is happening? <laughs> you know, like when you drop like a cucumber in front of a cat? Have you seen those? <laughs> <laughs> <And> you're, like, <laughs> you're fighting an invisible cucumber? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Veo, the tunneler. Oh, goodness. The tunneler rushes forward down the hallway towards <laughs> uh, Sebastian. Does it know I'm there? It does not until it gets to the very end of the hallway. So it sees you around the corner. I'm going to give you cover, which will be plus two to your AC against its attacks. Oh, good. So it swings around with its two claws, getting a 14 and a 26. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use shield to block the 14. Okay. The first attack bites into your flesh with as it rips in around the corner at, at, at you. You take nine points of damage. And then it tries to pull you close, and its mandibles begin to close and crunch and crunch. But it only gets a ten to hit. My shield is just like... Yeah, I, it, I so like your shield. your shield, the energy is pulsing out as its mandibles Ooh. are trying to crunch down around your skull. I, I turn back to the closed door of the bedroom, <laughs> and I say, Pluto... <laughs> We need some help. (laughs) Okay, Pluto, it's the start of your turn. You can see this flashing from under the door as you closed it. And you won't need to make a saving throw against it uh, because you're starting your turn there. What would you like to do? It's frustrating when you're trying to sleep and your friends just think like they can have like a rave (laughs) in the other room. And you're like... (laughs) We're roommates, and I think there's sort of... So I'm going to open the door. <laughs> I see the chitin monster, and I scream out. I, you see this hideous creature. Caspian battle cry, which is, 
I'll help you, Sebastian. And I run at the, <laughs> <That's> the Caspian <laughs> battle <ground. laughs> You see the rat you prince don't... has closed the other door to the, to the supply room. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> he does it quietly, okay? <laughs> so I used about 25 things of movement. I'm just going to start... I'm going to wail on it. I'm going to give it a big old wabam uh, for 15. You, you bring your sword down and land a solid blow on its back. And the shitness, the, the, the hide of the creature, its shell-like hide, is like plate mail. Ugh. So like more Did than not penetrate, 15. no. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to use my bonus action and try to shove it. I'm going to give it a big old shove for 17. Wait, no. Whoa, whoa. Because it's plate mail. I'm all okay. Can I use precision attack on a shove? Sure. Nineteen. So you bring your sword down and throw the entire weight of your body up against this hulking creature, and you shove it down. Do you want to push it back or knock it prone? I'm gonna knock it back. Okay. Into the tunnel more, and then I'm gonna step. My last five feet of movement, just getting uh, a little yes. bit closer. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep it away from uh, from Sebastian. Sebastian. Nice turn, Sebastian. Ah. It is your turn. I immediately run around the corner, standing behind Pluto. Yep. And I am going to cast Web on it. Interesting play. Mm. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So put down the template for the webs. So a mass of sticky, thick strands fill the hallway right in front of Paluto. It seems like a familiar (laughs) set of events. (laughs) It works. So it will need to make the saving throw at the start of its turn, I believe. Yeah, each creature that starts its turn in the webs or that enters them during its turn must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. And then the creature is restrained if they fail. Sounds good. Anything else, Sebastian? Um, I, I back up. I just kind of push myself past the table. And okay. I'm like, thanks, Pluto. You catch a glimpse of its crazy glare. Okay. We go to the top of the round. Veo. Yes. You've run into the corner, but the creature is still within your line of sight. Ooh. If you want to, you can avert your eyes entirely and not have to make another saving throw against it. However, doing so will mean that you can't see the Umber Hulk. I'm going to go for a saving throw. I'm like, ah, these other two are being pretty brave. I guess I could shake off the scaredy cat and go for it. Okay, make a charisma saving nice, throw. Nice. 11. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm still like, no. You're, you're <laughs> super affected by its glare again, so roll me a d8. 7. So once again, you're flipping out cucumber style, <laughs> and you're trying to... Uh, and you slash and slash. Um, you can still move, um, but uh, you have no action. I'm going to try to swoop into the room nice. and get as far away from it as possible because I'm still freaked out by it. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm actually going to round the corner so that way I'm not looking at it. Sounds good. This time. <laughs> Veo, we now go to the Umber Hulk. It fails its saving throw against the webs. Yeah. And Woo! is restrained by them. However, Pluto is still within its grasp. Hi. So it is going to... It is very confused. It lumbers against the webs as it tries to claw forward. It's going to go for making its attacks with disadvantage. It won't try to break out of the webs. Because this got a meal right in front of it. (laughs) So it comes forward with its first claw. Getting an 18 to hit. 19. Ah, it's that new armor. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Tobias. A dragon hive armor. As... The resounding blow still sends shudders up your body. This is a claw that can break through solid rock. And when he hits me, I'm going to repost. Okay. Because I'm tired of this crit. Oh, snap! So he comes at me with his slow lumbering arm, and I just, I counter with this. 
blade right up. So you stab you right nice through the arm as, as it goes down the soft shell of the underside of the arm. You stab into it. And uh, go for the armpit. For a big old. That was pretty disappointing. Fifteen damage. Wait, you do got I got something my, on the board? But do I have my plus six both times or just the ones? Just the ones. Yeah, so fifteen. Okay, we're on the board. <sighs> nice. It's going to continue attacking though. It makes another swipe as it reco- as this black, purpley blood oozes from the wound. It brings its other claw down. <laughs> Getting an 11. <laughs> you batter it out of the way with the shield. It tries one last time to lunge forward with its mandibles. Getting a 19. Ah! So, um, uh, uh. No more reactions, my friend. Nope. <laughs> the Except. mandibles come down, and you raise your shield, and it crunches around, and the two mandibles come around the shield and slash into the side of your head. Ah! And you're going to take the helmet does nothing. 14 points of damage. Ooh. That's a spicy mandible. And as it looks over your shield... It's crazy no. eyes. <laughs> All the sections kind of flashing right in your face. <laughs> are you going to avert your gaze, or are you going to roll the saving throw? Uh, I'm going to look down at my beautiful armor. <laughs> 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 I like my armor. I like my armor. armor. I avert my gaze. You avert your gaze? Okay. So you cannot see the Umber Hulk. Hmm. If you choose to avert your gaze. I uh, I choose not to see the Umber Hulk. Okay. You look away from it. Closing your eyes, shutting your visor. What are you going to do? Oh, it's my turn. It is. Um, so as long as... If you're looking away from the Umber Hulk, you can try to attack it, but you'll do so with disadvantage because you effectively cannot see it. Even nice. if it's restrained? It is restrained, so that will cancel it out. <gasps> yeah. I will swing wildly at where I think it is. <laughs> okay. Which Go I hope it. is right in front of me, holding onto my shield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting a 19. That will hit. Yes. Uh, for 12 damage. That was almost better than your crit. <laughs> it was actually, yeah, my crit was pretty brutal. Um, and then... I'm going to... So you feel the shock of your blade uh, latch on, uh, cut through something <laughs> as you kind of hold your shield over, like right in front of your face, closing your eyes, just battering downward with the sword. And I'm going to uh, use my bonus action to just uh, second wind. Okay. I'm going to stand my ground. Stand your ground. Sebastian, the creature's mandibles are crunching in around Pluto's shield, its opalescent eyes glowing everywhere in the room. Are you going to avert your eyes or are you going to look at, the, look at it? Sebastian stares him in the eyes. Make a charisma saving throw. Uh, so charismatic. Hope it's worth it. Ooh. 20. You love it. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not hypnotic. <laughs> um, so I run up back next to Pluto. Mm-hmm. And I look at him and I'm like, I hope this thing's flammable because that web sure is. Ooh. And then I'm going to burning hands into the webbing and the umber. Okay. It makes a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage. Getting a three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, burn, burn, baby, burn. Web. Disco and burn. Uh, that is 11 damage. And um, it's going to take 2d4 as long as it stays in that webbing. Yeah, because it's covered in four sections of webbing, which are all ignited, uh, I'm going to say that it's going to take more damage because it's, it's in multiple squares. It's 2d4 fire damage uh, for every five foot cube of web. Yeah, so for each cube then, because it's completely engulfed in it. So yeah. it, it, it's getting cooked. <laughs> Looks cool. like we're getting two but meals tonight. It, Cook that roach. But because it's going to get cooked, it's no longer restrained by the webs. I'm going to say that effectively the webs are going to be burned away by the start of its next turn. That's fair. Okay. Veo, we're fire. over to you. Okay. 
taking some breaths in that room, getting away from those eyes. Um, all right, take a, take a couple seconds, and I turn back around to the door of the room, and I'm like, all right, time to skewer this cooking roach, and I fire my... Um, uh, actually, first, before I do that, I'm like, wait, I have Zephyr Strike on my bonus action, so that way I can take advantage okay. on this. Um, so I use Zephyr Strike as one of my spells. Oh, oh. Here comes the killing blow. Oh, there we go. Uh, with my uh, longbow, with my sharpshooter. And... Did you get take advantage for Zephyr, oh, Zephyr, Zephyr Strike? Yeah. Here it is. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so, 15? It's a miss. Ooh. It does not penetrate its thick, armored hide. And... I'm like, well, no skewers tonight. And I twist back around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice shot. Nice shot. The Umber Hulk takes a bucket load of damage. Sebastian, do you want to roll it up? Sure. For yeah, being yeah, in the yeah. burning webs. So uh, we're doing... D4 per square. So four. So eight D4. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Count them. Six. Another four. Another eight. <laughs> 18 right now. And two. 20. 20 damage. Ah. Nice. It is burning as it rushes its way through the crumbling webs. Remove the web template. It is bloody. I guess burn. <laughs> yeah. That's and it bad. comes forward with a rage and smashes both of you. Ah. No, no. Getting a 23 against Sebastian and a 22 against Paluto. Both of you take nine points of damage as it smashes its fists fist down. And then it turns its mandibles and lunges forward at uh, Paluto with them, trying to bring them down over his shield. Uh oh. Getting a natural one. <laughs> and I'm going to sentinel it. Um, okay. For attacking my. My herald, the herald of of Pluto Jackson. That's me. Oh, I miss. <laughs> <laughs> so in this desperate moment, as this burning umber hulk lumbers ah! down the hallway, smashing and grabbing at the two of you, you try to strike at it, but it's deflected off of its thick hide. I'm just swinging at it as it's like crushing me with its <laughs> flaming. It's like got you by the helmet, and you're just like ah, like trying to defend. What will me. you do, Pluto? Um, do you want to avert your gaze? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. You won't look at it. At the maddening I look light. At the flame. I won't look at the flame. Okay, you're attacking with this event. I'm too scared. What you got? To hit. I'm gonna precision strike, and I'm gonna get a twenty-three. Ooh. So, um. Gritting your teeth, trusting your hearing, you swipe towards where the Emmerhulk is barreling down forward at you, and you land the attack. Uh, for eight more damage. Every little bit counts. And then I'm going to use um, my bonus action to try to shove it to the ground. Okay. Uh, only getting a 13. It resists... Bummer. Okay, and I'm going to stand still. Ugh. Sebastian. Hmm. Quick question. Do I get the long rest after this, or have I already taken mine? After this. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> in that it's case, been in, your rest has been interrupted. In that case, I get I get angry. <gasps> and I, I move up, and I'm like, stop trying to eat my friend. And I'm gonna uh, cast burning hands. Actually, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna just scorching ray it three times. Do you still want to move up though? Because it'll make your scorching rays with disadvantage if you do. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was just kidding. Got um, you. Yeah, so Got I'm gonna you. scorching Got ray it. Oh, do <laughs> I? I'm still still staring at it. Do I need to make another save? You do indeed. Hooray! I'm glad I reminded you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at dead in the eyes. Oh uh, yeah, I'm good. In the many eyes. I got a twenty-two. 
you love it. The flashing lights. <laughs> it's actually, like, kind of inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm, targets. I have not broken eye contact with this thing the entire time. It um, feels awkward. It's like gazing into madness. It's a familiar place for you. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> I've been there many times. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna scorching ray. Just imagine it trying to look away, and it's just like Whoa. it's trying to look away from you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I got a fourteen. It's deflected off its hide. Darn! I try again. I'm aiming for its silly face. That's better. Uh, I got a twenty something. That hits in the last shot. <laughs> Don't feel like doing that math. Um, I get an eighteen. Two hits. Nice. Uh, so while one of the rays is deflected off of its um, the, its outer shell, the and other two, two good shots. Uh, so while it's burning, I shoot it in the face twice with these rays, getting oh. nice, uh, nice. nineteen damage. <laughs> <laughs> good job! And it groans, letting out that. <laughs> Uh, and stumbles for a moment, but it's still keeping its footing. Oh. Veo, you're up. Yeah, Veo. I'm like, all right, one more Zephyr strike, and hopefully <laughs> I can hit this thing. Finish it off, cat. So I take another Zephyr strike and take my longbow. I'd be like, skewers for two. And I take the shot. No. <laughs> oh, oh, man. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Six to hit. <laughs> Oh, I'm so not getting barbecued tonight. And I go back <laughs> around the corner. Because I do not want to look this thing in the face. I'm so freaked out. <laughs> okay. Let me back around. Let me back around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should uh, mention that Pluto Jackson is very bloodied. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> Super bloodied. Pluto. You're the only... Uh, having taken so much from it and it's you're blocking its path to Sebastian who's just ha- hit it it smashes you in the side towards the wall getting an 18 to hit nope <laughs> it smashes again getting a natural one <laughs> and finally it comes in with his mandibles to bite down this is the one getting a 25 <laughs> there oh. it is for 11 points of damage uh, I have 9 health I've it, it, it picks me uh, up <laughs> by the head <laughs> and flings you to the side and you land on the ground Pluto! And just bleeding out. Uh, Sebastian now is like, oh, oh God. <laughs> My body just gets... <laughs> oh. oh no. And it rushes forward right at Sebastian. Uh. Yeah, I had trouble with that last sentinel attack uh, <laughs> as I'm unconscious. Pluto, it is your turn. I need a death saving throw, buddy. Twelve. That is one success. Sebastian, it is your turn. Um, I, I let out the a mild Umberhawk groan. The is right in front of you. <laughs> I'm. I'm Are you going to avert your eyes or t- or look at it? I still am not breaking eye contact. Okay, roll it. What you got? Twelve. Okay, that's a failure. Roll a d8. Yes, I finally have stared at it long enough that it's upset me. I get a three. You broke eye contact to look at my body right uh, Yeah, I broke the you... eye contact to look at your, your dying body and, like, and then I look back. This is back. so beautiful. And you do nothing on your turn. Oh. You just stare at its face. <laughs> I am mesmerized by you, good sir. Mesmerized. Uh oh. Veo. You go to the top of the round with Veo. Okay. Um, <laughs> when um, you poke around your head this time, it's like, it's a whole different <laughs> it's scene. It's a whole different scene. <laughs> You're like dead against the wall, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, my limp body. You know what? I am going to use my feline agility to mm-hmm. move double my speed. Mm-hmm. I'm going to run over to Pluto and use a healer's kit um, to... Um, stabilize a creature that has zero hit points. Okay. Um, that will be your action? Yep. And then I'm going to, after I stabilize you... You can do that, or do you want to feed him one of his potions? Because he'll be stable, but he won't be back up. Okay, yeah. I'll he- actually, I'll feed you one of the potions so that we can get some hit Gracias. points. Gracias. 
Um, and then I'm going to after be Clearly like, you get ten hit points. I'm like, you okay, Thank buddy? You. Good. Oh, what happened? Did <laughs> and I I'm win? Like, <laughs> okay, hit him some more, and I run back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> to get back out of the way. <laughs> okay. So like, I do not want to look at this thing. I'm so freaked out. <laughs> That's amazing. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it is the Ember Hulk's turn, though. Don't worry, I'll do the same for you, uh, Sebastian, if, it ha- if you need it. I might. <laughs> Bail, wait. It goes <laughs> to smash back. Sebastian. Getting a 10. I dodge. And at 11. I dodge. And it comes in with the mandibles. <laughs> oh, the mandibles. Ooh. Getting an 11. <laughs> I, I like come, I snap back into it as it, like I'm mesmerized. And as it starts swinging at me, I do like, like I do like a matrix. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm like, oh God. And I start like going backwards and stuff. And it somehow just misses me. And That's unreal. It looks <laughs> skillful. I but picture it's, it's in your luck. head, it's playing like, wouldn't it be nice if we're together? <laughs> and you're just like dodging so gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? That was epic. Pluto, you're conscious. Do you, you're beside Sebastian. You could take a swipe with your sentinel. Uh, disadvantage? With disadvantage. I swipe. <laughs> I go for the, for the, I've, I've pierced his arm. I'm going for the legs. Getting a big old 18. That actually hits as it. You get up from the ground. I I I swipe at its at its exposed leg, getting uh, thirteen damage. You slice its leg off. Yes. <gasps> and it bleeds out, horribly screaming and shrieking, until it expires. Like in it's a just, desperate moment. It's it's like it's is it like crab meat inside? <laughs> Is it like a... a oh, big... it's like violently... It, no, its insides are violently ejected out the leg. <laughs> <laughs> it just all comes oh, rushing yeah. out. Yeah. Is it meaty? I was going to say, can we cook it? Can it I looks eat like it? bile. Oh. oh. So it's more like buggish. <laughs> it's could, all over me. Could be good me. protein, you know. I'm laying in it. I'm going to eat like crickets I'm gasping stuff. for breath. I, I first, first I turn to Pluto, who's on the ground, barely with it. I'm like, are you, you okay, bud? Yeah. <sighs> Can I go to bed now? <laughs> yeah, I think we all. Uh, Did Zaya? you hear me from the room? Is it the done? Pr- yeah. <laughs> Zaya, are you okay? Said synonymously with the rat prince, like the cat and the rat are like, is it done yet? <laughs> Did you guys see my sweet dodge? No. No, nobody, <laughs> no. nobody saw it. Nobody. Uh. Polito saw the very end of it, but yeah. he was more busy trying to get his, his uh, hit in. Oh. Grasping my sword and swinging it at it as I could. Well, I'm going to stand up and I'm just going to just saunter back to the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I'm just, just like, acting like nothing. Happened. I'm not even leaving the room. And all I, you hear is, Sebastian, can you cook that fish so we can have something to eat? <laughs> I, I like, I cast, actually, I don't even have spell slots uh, for that. I'm going to use a uh, fire bolt and I, I cook the fish yes. and drag it into the bedroom and we eat and go to bed. <laughs> Okay. The Rat Prince is turned to watch. <laughs> yeah, Rat Prince, you yeah, keep Rat watch. Prince, you we keep need watch for a while. We need to nap. We need a little a little nap. The rest of the evening passes without incident. Long rest? Yes. Yay. Oh, but I am interested Wouldn't to see it be nice after we wake up uh, <laughs> the scales because, you know, if we're talking about delirium scales, it might be better than these little fish ones. Ooh. Yeah, I like the idea of uh, harvesting the 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 monsters that we're killing to see if there's any, because I'm sure Oscar would have some kind of interest in how the mutations are happening as well, and uh, maybe there's certain monsters that maybe have more resilient. Like, I mean, he's ob- obviously interested in you mm-hmm. and in your blood. But maybe there's other monsters that hold up really well to it or other creatures or we can study the mutations yeah, that would be my di- thing how it's different effects are and maybe we can like tame it i'm even wondering if you can use the scales to like grind them into a powder and potentially get some magical energy from that yeah. too yeah not that i'm a scientist or anything but yes so Sebastian takes the last watch of the night. Oh, yeah. Which passes without incident. 
but uh, we can have you roll 1d6. Four. I get a one, <laughs> but my bad thing that happens when I roll a one already happened. So oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it comes back a lot. <laughs> yeah, it can't come back. Its eyes lot. start glowing a little ah. bit, and you get freaked out. <laughs> Great. Well done. You pack Just your so things in the morning, so. assembling the rest of the equipment that you've assembled. And what do you do? Oh, well, that was a nice relaxing night. Um, you guys want some leftover fish, yes. person? <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually. I'm going to take the most mm. fishy parts of it <laughs> and stay from the people parts. It's kind of like a fillet of soul. Oh, Human shoe, soul. Shoe soul. Oh, my God. Smelly fish. What I do want to do is I want to check out where it was excavating. Excellent. Yes. Looking back down the hallway, it looks like the creature was trying to dig back up the staircase that it had prior previously collapsed. It had gotten a fair way through, but hadn't quite finished burrowing through the rock. Whatever this creature was, it was capable of burrowing through solid rock and masonry. Jeez. Ooh, can we take some of its claws too? Sure. Yes. You gonna wear them as gloves? Digging gloves. Oh, we could turn them into gloves. Since my claws don't do anything. You look down <laughs> at its eyes, no longer glowing, Aww. but just cold and dead. You can kind of see the little bit of last sheen, like there's a little flash once. You kind of go, <laughs> and it was called. Freaky. Sorry. It was the... called an Umber Hulk. The Turner. See, Rat Prince. Scales. You fear nothing with the three oh. ghosts. The ghosts are truly mighty. They destroy the evil tunneler. Oh! You want to lead us further in now? Oh, yes. Can I have some of that fish? You can have the legs and arms. Oh! And and as as much of the of the creepy-eyed thing as you want. It looks and it grabs its eyes. And uh, looks back at you and says, Rat Prince, save these for later. Have a good time, yes? <laughs> yes. Yes. Good time. I just gave the rat some drugs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to... Oh, no. He's going to go on the Whoops. You have a good time. Go Enjoy for yourself. It. The Rat Prince says, I go ahead Well, looking for a fish man. Find him. Bring him back. So I not see the way ahead, but now we not have to swim. Before, it all flooded, filled with water. Yes, yes, yes. Me not care. Me just swim. Get further into the city, yes? Now we just walk. Nice, dry, yes? That is much better for me. I'm not a fan of swimming in sewer water. Ghosts are very smart. Thank you. Let's go. We go. We go. Onward. You head down the stairs, which are still wet and muck covered from the water that once filled this area. It's a small maintenance access tunnel. And you can see on the gate as you go back down, it says city workers only, kind of engraved on the rock beside. It opens back up into a wide sewer tunnel. Much wider than the previous ones that you've been through. And you can see, right at the base of the stairs as you come out, the sluice gate that was lowered before has opened. So the, it's a three-sectioned gate. So the bottom parts have slid open, and then a top grate has slid up. Looking on the other side at the chains and, and all the, the gear work on this side, these sluice gates were built to withstand siege weapons. With how well protected they are because effectively this is the underground if you're trying to attack Drakenheim the sewers are a pretty good way to get in through the walls makes sense but of course Drakenheim had been besieged in hundreds of years but you know you never know people are people have rivalries crafty yeah Caspia <laughs> oh sir bring me <laughs> the sewer tunnel going forward snakes slightly forward 
So for long stretches, it's quite straight. And there are several smaller tunnels that intersect with it, almost in a grid-like pattern here and there. The smaller, and all throughout, you can see overhead, there are smaller drains. So here and there, you'll actually look up and you'll see this little pipe with a grate over top of it. The pipe itself is just a drain, maybe no more than a foot wide. And it leads up and you can see little shafts of light from the city above. It's not like a sun sunlight because of course it's completely overcast. And it seems like it might be raining because there's a few bits of water that are dripping down through these pipes. But with the area open, it's not flooded. The gutter down the middle still has a pretty steady flow of water coming down it though. You follow along the sewer tunnel as it snakes underneath what you imagine might be Temple Road before it comes to another large intersection. And here, this is what you see. You're about, you've traveled probably about 500 to 1,000 feet at this point. Okay. It's a good, uh, good couple minute hike down the way. And you come to a large intersection. It's a T-shaped intersection. Here, there are two more, actually, sorry, three more of these sluice gates that have been set up. The one straight ahead of you is open. The ones to either side are closed. Well, that makes our choice easy, I guess. Do they have the same, like, engravings and symbols on them? Yes, they do. Uh, the ones that seemingly may have disintegrated a body on the first gate? Or is that body laying in front? They don't have that symbol. They still have the engravings of the dra of Drakenheim on them, the, the crest of the city, which is a dragon perching on a castle. But the arcane runes that that first gate had are not on these ones. Are they holding back water? Yes, they are. And looking down the seam of the gates, you can see that there's a collection of trash and other things that are caught where it's closed. Perhaps these gates might have been open last night. Yeah. I'm thinking we could reverse what we did, and maybe we could potentially open a different way. But do we want to? Maybe we don't. Rap but, Prince, which way do you usually swim? Oh, I swim past these. Then there's another, like these, much further ahead. And we go left that way. Like through the open gate here? Yes, we go the, the, the way here. We keep going. Okay. Straight. Yes, yes. <clears throat> I don't see why we would deviate from the Rat Prince's... I mean... Last time we deviated, we found ghouls, and then we deviated from his plan again, and were attacked by a monster. No, but I, I'm, I, I know, I know. I think I, I think I know what might happen though. If we get to the next intersection, it's it closed. might be blocked, and then we'll have to. Do you know what I mean? So I, I think we have two options. We can go look ahead, see what it is. Mm -hmm. We could also backtrack fiddle with <laughs> the machines i'm worried about closing off the whole thing again and mm -hmm. being back at square one but yeah. also i i see what you're saying so maybe we just go ahead and we see scout and yeah. see because we, we can always come back exactly. right and then if we need to then we can figure it out but i don't know mm. how we'd have to know a, a different pattern in order to open close it right blur's well, thinking real hard right now like his, his his head's on fire with the amount of math he's trying to do <laughs> there are several dead fish and frogs all along the way. There's a few frogs, like living frogs as well, flopping fish, small, smaller ones that are running down the gutter in the middle. There's bits of trash, um, weeds, algae, all these things flowing down the sewer tunnel. It smells really bad. The water has washed out, has brought with it a bunch, though it's washed through the sewer, whatever was collecting here for probably 15 years is now all just making a mess of mud and refuse on the bottom now that the water's been drained out. How high was the water level? 
You, it, you can actually plainly wall. see, like when you look up the walls, you can see that there's a very clear line of algae yeah. on the walls. So the water level would have been about 10 feet high, only giving when it was filled, there would have only been maybe a foot, two feet okay. above before you hit ceiling. So it would have been a pretty tight swim. What a wonderful smell you've discovered. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, oh, not I'm you. Also sorry. Oh. I meant the rat prince. <laughs> for once. Uh, for bringing us here. Uh, rat prince, <laughs> where were these uh, fish people? Oh, I ran into them here. You see? That's his blood. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh. Wow. You can see that there is a rough stone knife and a makeshift spear broken on the ground here. They could use tools? They are evolving. I feel a little worse for eating them. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Creepy. Drakenheim's changed you, Veo. <laughs> yeah. What's the spear yeah, made fair. of? Drakenheim like, made me. Like a spear? Like a wooden... It looks like a, the tip of a broken blade has been tied to a broomstick. You know, crafty. Good for you. DIY. Get out there. If human hands, I would expect nothing less. <laughs> um, jeez. All right, I well, say we go forward. The fish yeah. people couldn't have gone down either of these other paths, so they must be keep. They must be ahead. Uh, They're probably really pissed that they don't have water anymore. Rat, rat prince. One last question about these fish people: Did they seem hostile, or did you just? Murder. Oh, the one that I brought, he was very, very upset when I got him. He was screaming and swearing at me. It was very, very funny. He said, no, no, you awful rat, don't kill me, I'll kill you. Huh. Uh, if we run into them, I say we play it cool and act like we didn't eat one of them. Yeah, rat prince, don't say anything. But they're so tasty. Well, maybe we might need to eat didn't them. Didn't you like to have a taste? But the yes. surprise is more important because then it's easier to kill them if we need to. Oh, oh. Right? We kill them all we eat and well for days. We bring them back to nest, yes? Yes. Rat yes. Prince, I have After. very specific orders. You let us do the talking, and if we say attack, then you attack. Until then, you remain silent. Did any of the others see you while you dragged this other one off? He thinks for a moment. No, no, no. I am silent, sneaky like ghost. Good. Good. So if they saw you again, they wouldn't say, oh, hey, there's the rat prince that killed our friend and dragged him off to be eaten. He looks at you like he'd never considered that possibility. <laughs> Interesting. This, new ground we'll see how this reference. goes. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll just keep marching on. Is, is it very, very dark, right? It's, it's like... Aside from the... Roughly every 50 feet, there is a small drain directly overhead that is open to the street above. The sewer is about 20 feet under the street. So there's, it's a narrow shaft that leads up. It's about a foot wide, about 10 feet tall, that leads up to the street above as a drain. Mm -hmm. And there are other smaller sewer pipes that come in and drain down into the sewer itself. But uh, beyond that, there are no sources of light. Because uh, I think I'll hang back a bit and use the drift globe if you guys want to Go ahead. stay ahead and I'll... Within reason, but I, I don't want to be too far behind, but I don't want to be... maybe? Yeah, I don't want to be too bright. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll set it to like a nice dark blue. Alrighty. Ooh. You continue to head forward down the sewers. It's quite a walk. It's dank. It smells bad. But at least you don't have to swim in sewage. It's only a short while before you come to the next major intersection of the sewer. And we will follow along with what happens after our break, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Down into the sewers. Before we delve back into the ruins, I'd like to give a big thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories we use and to Tabletop Audio for the great ambient music you're hearing. And finally, 100 Years Boar for the amazing narration in our introduction video. Shmeeple. <laughs> if you're enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash 
dungeon underscore dudes. The other really cool thing that's happening right now is the Dungeons and Dragons official team at Wizards of the Coast has teamed up with Adobe. Uh, And they have an awesome challenge for creative fans to create the next official monster for Dungeons & Dragons called the Terror of the Undermountain. So if you love cool monsters like the Umber Hulk, this is your chance to, like, have your brain baby become one of those weird creatures in the world of D&D. So cool. Yeah. So, and the prize is actually uh, $5,000 US, a chance to meet the dev team, and the monster you make will get rendered as a miniature as well. Um, that's, uh, you can find info about the contest at summontheterror.com and you basically get to download a free Photoshop demo and all these art assets that the Wizards of the Coast team has prepared and Photoshop together your Frankenstein creation of a monster, which is super cool and actually a really handy DM tool. I've been poking around with it to try and like make my own monsters and see what I can do with that. So We'd be really curious to see what people make with it, and it's definitely a worthwhile contest to enter in on. Yeah, there's some really cool stuff on there. I've been kind of dabbling in it, and I'm so excited to get creating my monster. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So before we took our break, the group had bedded down in the ruins of the sewer and got attacked by a horrible monster, the Tunneler, the Umber Hulk, which lives in the sewers under Drakenheim. Fighting the creature off and slaying it, they decided to continue through the sewers under Temple Road, deeper into Drakenheim. Finding that the passage of the sewers were now... Originally, these passages had been flooded, according to the Rat Prince, but Veo, Sebastian, and Paluto had managed to solve how to work the sluice gates, enough at least to open them up and cause the water to flow out so they didn't have to swim forward. You're now coming to another intersection deeper into the city. It's difficult to say how far into Drakenheim you are. Pardon me. Because Veo, your sense of direction is really good in the city above, but down here in the sewers, it's really hard to tell how far you've progressed. You've been traveling for no more than an hour or so. Um, and you've come to a major intersection in the sewers. You can see here that there is there are two large sluice gates to roughly the north and south. Probably slightly off that axis. It's again it's hard to tell because the sewer passageway has been snaking slightly here and there. And then there is a stepped platform where you can see rushing water falling down as the sewer steps up a level. You surmise, Veo, that this is probably, you're probably somewhere along where the hill of Drakenheim starts to rise up Mm -hmm. because there's a large cliff where the castle's built. And so the city kind of all angles upwards towards the north, which at your best guess would put you probably on the southern edge of Market Square, if this is what's happening here, if the the sewer level needs to raise up at this point. Mm. The water is flowing down towards you from the forward direction, from this raised platform, and the sluice gates are marked on either side with large carvings, again, the insignia of Drakenheim as well on on the gates. You can see that here originally there was another large sluice gate, these three section gates that close from the left and right and then with a grate down on the top. So one has opened up and two on the sides have closed, are closed. And as you get uh, forward down this way, the rat prince goes, oh no, 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 no. What is it? He points towards one of the closed gates and says, it's closed. Which which one? He, the one leading to the north. He says, I was going to take you this way. We were going to swim. This door was not open before. Now the ways are closed. What do we do now? Have you ever been down this way before? Now that it's open? No, I have not. It's, it always was a closed way. I always just used to swim, come out near the market that way. Mm. 
how close to the market are we? Like, how far down? Oh, we? very close. Very, very close. That way leads to north end of market. So we're, we're towards the south end of the market? Oh, yeah, it, I don't know. Maybe it lead there? Maybe not. I mean, if we're at kind of a... I, if, if we don't know the direction from here, maybe it's better to hop out of the sewer. Yeah. But... I'd say if we can get as close as possible, that would be best. Like, if we're on the south side, if we could go a little bit more north, it would be better, but... You know, we'll take what we can get. Is there a is there an exit? I, I, I'm gonna I'm, I'm looking around. Hmm. Looking around, you can see that on the far side, the the periphery of your light, looking up on the platforms, there's a pair of ladders on either side of this waterfall of water that lead up to the upper level. You can see that there's two bridges that are set across the sluiceways as well. The sluice, the sluice in the middle is filled with water to probably a depth of about two or three feet. It's enough that you could stand up in it, but it is there is flowing water going down the center now. Looking beyond, the sewer does seem to continue back and, and forward. If it opens up, or if there's an exit here, you'd have to go a bit further to check. Even above us, there's no... Uh, there's just like the regular foot If pipe. you are capable of squeezing yourself up and over yes you could like if you could turn into a vapor or squeeze about into yeah, yeah, a, the into a cylinder but beyond that there's no obvious exits from here okay let's see we go down a bit further and and see what's beyond um, that just don't hastily run into any corners last time i did that i ended <laughs> up inside a cube a gelatinous one how about we fact. go we'll go slow this time maybe we can send the rat prince kind of on a uh, Rat Prince, maybe you can look ahead. I know this is foreign territory for you, but... Scout. Please, do your ghosts well and and mm. find a new way to the surface. He climbs up the ladder by the waterfall and he begins slinking up that way. Um, and then he stops and you can see he kind of starts again and then he comes back down the stair, the, the ladder back towards you. And he rushes back as quietly as he can, almost on all fours as he runs forward like a, like a real rat. And he says, oh, angry fishes. Ooh. Angry fishes that way. How many? He looks at his hands and, I'll, I'll, and is trying to figure out. I'll do it. I'll do it with my hands. And I, I tell, ask him when. At least that many, yes, 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 yes. Oh, no. <laughs> um, they look very angry. I think they're not happy that I ate their friend. <laughs> Did they see you? I don't know. Why don't... I mean, there's, there's no reason for them to be angry at us. Maybe they know some directions. Jackson Huddle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys would not have been <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we could go back. We could mess with the sluice gates. The, yeah, and try to redo what we did because potentially, now that we've opened the flood, even if we do reverse it, it might still leave it open, like the way like not have water come rushing back in, kind of. Thing? Yeah, like I think the water will rush in from the other ways, but I I think we we've, we've already started the emptying process. As, as weird as this sounds, I, I'm interested in talking to these fish people. They don't know about our dinner. <laughs> um, they seem intelligent enough to build tools. They might know another way forward. If I talk to something that I've eaten today, I'm going to have a sort of panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> If I have to be like, hi, how are you? I, I, it might slip out. It might just come out. I don't know. <laughs> I ate your friend. <laughs> oh, I've eaten you before. I just hold his hand. I'm like, oh, that looks good. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm okay with that. Um, I mean, my experience with morphed magical creatures in Drakenheim is, is not that they're necessarily friendly, but um, if you want to... 
We have haven't a... met anybody unfriendly yet in the sewers. <laughs> the gelatinous cube. It was friendly enough. What, do you think it was just trying to shake your hand? Maybe. <laughs> I didn't speak its language. Ass- acid it off. Like burn it off. Monsters are just friends you haven't made yet. Exactly. Uh, false. <laughs> um, They're friends who want to eat your face. The the fact is, by the, by the description of the horrible death of one of their kind by at the hands of the Rat Prince, it seems like they weren't immediately hostile towards him. He just happened to snatch one of them, murder it, and drag it back. <laughs> Uh, these could be intelligent creatures living in the sewers uh, that build tools and know their way around the sewers better than anybody. All right, Sebastian. I like... But if you get me killed in this sewer... Do you want me to go ahead and try to try to negotiate with I just with don't want to be like rat food. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, don't worry about him. He's he's. No, these are fish. That was rats. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that makes me worry. feel better. Yeah, it's a little about. different. You'll be fish food. Yeah. <laughs> no, know that you will be fish food probably first before me. I always so have an escape plan. Okay, My escape good. plan is to jump in the sewage and float on back. I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll follow my herald and my guide, but I, I, Ready up. Are we gonna go talk? Don't to look. Fish? Don't look too intimidating. If uh, I'm gonna hang ready back for a, a battle. little bit. I hope they speak one of the three languages I know. What languages do you know? I know uh, common, elvish, and undercommon. Oh, me too. Oh, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. You head forward, and as you walk forward down the sewer towards the waterfall and the sluice gate point, the collection of fish people have assembled at the top. Fish people. No, look at them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're so oh, cute. They're so many. Is that what we ate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It's like a catfish. It's more person than fish. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Not My stomach is like, <laughs> Not if you cut off their arms. <laughs> Not if you cut off their arms. <laughs> so, uh, and tails. there's a, there's a few butts. of them at, down at the bottom they as well. Butts. They have butts. They don't have tails. <laughs> oh man, I just ate something with a butt. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, but if you put their legs together, it could be like a tail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's tie it together next time. So, <laughs> you walk forward, and as you walk forward, the um. The fish people see you. There's a collection, almost a dozen of them. (laughs) And they all have scales in varying shades of purple, blue, and green. And all of them have eyes that are glowing with a small kind of purpley twinge in the center. And then these big, bulging, yellow uh, their their pupils are purple, but their eyes are bulging in yellow and filled with blood veins. They're wearing makeshift clothing made of sackcloths and loincloths, and a couple of them have roped belts. A few of them are carrying makeshift shields or found shields and spears and swords. Some of them are wearing crude-looking necklaces or uh, carrying trinkets along their, their belts. And a few of them are carrying one of them is carrying a large pincer like staff and another is carrying a whip as you come forward the group of them see you and they the first ones am- am- amongst them lower their weapons and they say in a blustery voice <laughs> Do I'm I, gonna push. <laughs> I, I step forward and I go. I don't think it worked, guys. Do I understand? <laughs> and, any? and as you say, they all look very insulted. Oh, no. um, I, I, I say, well met in common. And a few of them tur- turn to each other and another, and one of them set, comes forward and says. Well, blah, 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 well met in undercommon. 
I continue to speak in undercommon. Are you locals to these parts? Blah, we, 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 we live in these parts, yes. Yes, this is our home. This is the domain of the Duchess. Excellent. We, we are merely seeking passage into the city. And this seemed a safe route. Indeed, we p- patrol this way regularly. We are looking for our our missing friend, Blip Bloop. Can you describe Blip Bloop? Yes, he was young, well muscled. He's wearing just just a, a, a few cloths, carrying a spear and a and a dagger. He he is the Duchess's favorite. Yes, and I chime in. You know what? We. we uh. I don't understand any of what's happening. I, you guys I speak are just under common. Fish to each other. <laughs> 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 and in my cat, <laughs> and I'm speaking, and if, I say, "If you help us find Blip Bloop, we will reward you." <laughs> uh, the Under Hulk. Uh, we ran into a vicious monster back there. Yeah. And in the same room that we encountered the monster, we found a dismembered body <laughs> that looks very similar to your kind. Is there a chance that that was him? Make a deception check. Would he have gone off on his own? Why would he go off on his own? <laughs> Poor uh, 22. Um, you see the, the faces of them go, Oh, 21. no! Blip bloop! Blip bloop! He shouldn't have gone off on, on his own. He was got by a horrible monster. Um, and one of the others turns and says, Yes, I told you. I told you. I saw. It looked like... It looked like Catching arms came up from the darkness, grabbed him, grabbed him. They did. They did. Yes, a, a massive monster. Um, they did. And we slayed that monster. Oh, <gasps> you did? Yes. Do you, do you have Blip Luke's body? Uh, we were. Oh, I. What I do have. It was you know, it was. <laughs> it was quite terrible, but I did grab some scales to prove it to you, and I take some scales out of my bag. I say, Is this. Is this your friend? They, they did they, appear mostly. They pull the scales and they say, "Oh, oh no!" I'm so sorry. Blip bloop. <laughs> oh, if we were, if we had tear glands, we would cry. Oh, I'm so sorry about your friend. It's a dog eat fish world out there. Was it a dog? It was. It, it's a bug eat. Fi- I don't know, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm trying. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my undercommon's a little rusty. So, guys, are they friendly? Yeah, just don't mention uh, they were eaten by the Umber Hulk. They were eaten a by whole, the Umber Hulk. Horrible incident. Horrible, Pluto. Incident. You remember? <laughs> just, just nod. Yes. Looks horrible. Looks sad. Looks sad. Yeah, mour- mournful. Oh. <laughs> there he goes. We're so sorry for the loss of your friend and the seemingly eating of him by such horrible monsters. Horrible. It's truly awful. Truly, truly awful. We're so used to our people being eaten by dogs, by cats, by rats. No offense. Of course. None taken. I do eat a lot of things in this city. Do you eat fish? No, never. (laughs) Anything but fish. I know they have feelings, so... <laughs> they and eye I you rather suspiciously, and the and the rat prince just looks at you and is like, <laughs> "Does the rat prince understand that?" Yeah, yeah okay. Did you suppress like a fish burp? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just like lick my lips a little bit. No, 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 no. Fish feels. They feel. I would never uh, ask them. Ask them how to get out of here. Oh, um. We seek passage to the north side of Market Square. W- w- have they ever been above ground? Yeah, no, um, I don't know. You seek passage to the surface? Blop, 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 blop. Uh, a little north of here, preferably. Do you, do you happen to know a way? Th- this gate is closed. Uh, once again, that mm. monster much, must have removed all the water from your home. Rude. This gate is open. And yes, we came to ins- inspect why all our water is gone. It's draining away. The Duchess will be very, very unhappy. But if you seek to go to the surface 
great land above. We could show you the way. You have found out what happened to our good friend. You are true heroes. <laughs> true my name, heroes. My name is Sebastian Crow, and I avenged your friend. <laughs> Yes, he, he did. I was a witness. I saw it. Yep. I don't, I don't feel good about this one. <laughs> <laughs> My stomach's turning. Because like you're hungry? <laughs> or because you... I suddenly lost my appetite. <laughs> it's okay. I'll eat your food. <clears throat> I've, I've got no qualms. <laughs> oh, God. Uh... <laughs> I'm suspiciously eyeing them up. Like, what's like? What would be a good like? Was he a a, a good one? Like, is there better one? Better looking? Like more appetite? More no. appetite? Yeah. That's, no, we're not for, eating. Thank you for <laughs> no. wording it. Um. <laughs> Even I draw well, the line. Well, he was young and he was uh, muscly. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, he was completely delicious. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Oh man. Um. But going ahead, do you know the way to the to the surface? We know of one place. Yes, yes, it is where all the great harvest comes. We go there to gather our food and meals that come down to us from the surface world above. Oh. What do you eat? What do you eat? Oh, we eat people. Oh. But what did he say? Like alive people or dead people? They're usually bodies, yes. They're, they're, there's a great idol above that he throws the bodies of the unworthy down into the cistern, and we collect them there, and they nourish us. Oh, amazing. But you're not going to eat us, are you? No, we'd have to kill you. That would be horribly barbaric. It's true. It's very true. Eating people is so wrong. Hey, what did he say? Don't worry. Don't, don't worry about it, Pluto. I'm glad you can't understand. We're talking about the weather? Mm. 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 We could show you the way, or we could introduce you to the Duchess, yes? I, I think we should just make our way. I mean, maybe we can come visit some other time and pay homage to the ju- Duchess. Uh, maybe bring some body parts with us as, as snacks. Finger foods. The, the fish can't smile, but they would be if they could. They just open their mouth. Yeah, we'll bring some finger foods. It's good. Like literally? Literally finger foods. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, lead the way. Okay. The great group of the fishmen. <laughs> <laughs> and fish people. Lead you through... The sewers, and as you as you're walking, the the rat prince turns to you, Vey, and says, "Cat, ghost cat, yes, yes, they look very tasty, yes. No, <laughs> you are mighty, you no. are strong. We kill them. No, nope. we could eat them. Yes. Do you want to bring the wrath of the rat king upon you at this moment? Oh, I be good. I be good. If you soil these mortal bodies of the rat." God's messengers, you will pay the price. Oh. So shut your rat trap. <laughs> I I turn to Veo and in common I say, are we still carrying parts of that fish? No. Okay, good. We no, ate do you it still all. have Just the fish scales. on you? I didn't take any with me. Do you still have the fish from before? Did you eat the, the candied salmon? Do you the candied still have the salmon's candy salmon? in my bag, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I ate a little bit of it, but... You may want to, like, I don't know, tuck that in Oh, a, it's like, tucked. It, at the wrapped. bottom, wrap it, tuck uh, it underneath the cheese, which is yeah, probably a bit the smelly. The cheese is so very it prominent. Smell covers so, yeah. the smell of the fish. Let's just, yeah, don't, <sighs> don't bring that out nope. or out or nope. anything. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, we're good. We're <laughs> They're okay. gonna show us the way out. Don't worry, Pluto. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm. Uh, I just clunk, clunk, clunk. You walk clunk. forward through the sewers with the bodyguard of the fishmen. And they, and as you walk forward, you can see that seeping down from up above in the areas of the pipelines are coming the thin mist 
of the delirium haze. Mm. You can feel it kind of in your lungs a little bit. It's like a slight burning sensation. This little bit of a smell of ozone hangs in the air, on which almost at times overpowers the smell of the sewage around you. Mm. The fish people continue to lead you forward past several other doors and grates that see, that might lead off in other directions through, through the sewers. And one of them at one point says, If you ever wish to come back, this is the domain of the Duchess. She That's is very smart. powerful and very wise. Just stay on her good side. Of course. We would never do anything to upset the Duchess. What are your names, yes? Yeah. Well, I already told you I'm Sebastian Crow, the avenger of your friend. And your mute friend here? He cannot speak, yes? Uh, not the language of such fine people. Oh. He mm -hmm. speaks much <laughs> lesser languages. Uh, his name is Pluto Jackson. Hmm. And I am Veo Senya. Wow. Wow. Yes, well, we shall continue. You come eventually to a very large cistern in the sewer. There's a large, open, undercroft-like space with several pillared sections rising up into the middle. And from above, the, system, the cistern rises. It's almost like a big cylinder-like room. And several sewer, sewer pathways are all leading in here, but they're all sloping off from it. And in the bottom of the cistern, there are... Well, there's a few things in the cistern. So it's a big cylindrical room with pillars all rising up in various ways. And at the very top, you can see the light shining down. It's a very specific circle. And Veo... You recognize this circle. Mm -hmm. It's the Well of the Dead in Slaughterstone Square. Oh. This is where... I, I just turn to the fish people and be like, this is where all your food comes from? Oh, yes. And they point to the bottom of the cistern where there is a sea of corpses. All manner of bodies slain by terrible wounds, puncture wounds, all of them still with equipment and weaponry on them, groups of adventurers, dead soldiers, members of the Hooded Lanterns, members of the cult of the, f of the, the followers of the Falling Fire, a few of the paladins as well, other groups of adventurers, even a few Caspian bodies all laying are they like are they his men some of them yes <laughs> no. uh, was it Damien, always called no. slaughterstone square or was that after the incident it's always been called slaughterstone square because mm -hmm. slaughterstone square is where all the public executions were held mm -hmm. huh. I witnessed um, a couple myself Me. hey what was that thing way back when we were sleeping in the mill that was written on the wall that 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 etching that said don't go to slaughterstone square did it? Well, it didn't say don't go under Slaughterstone Square. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this our way out? Looking down, you can see that the cistern here, the way that you've come through the sewers, the sewers have switched tracks. And it seems like the, the cistern might be slightly disconnected from the rest of the sewer system. Mm. But you can see that there is the well opening at the top. And there's a spiral staircase that leads along the edges of the cistern that leads to an exit above. And then the bodies look like they're floating in water at the bottom. 
and you can see at one point it looks like there's one of the fish people has been is literally taking one of the pincers and fishing up one of the bodies and dragging it off to one of the exits. Circle of life. Uh, um, on our map, where is Slaughterstone Square? Let's pull up the map. I don't think it's listed. I don't have it here now. Oh, it's not. Okay. We haven't been so, there yet. Slaughterstone Square. If you see, if you draw a line between where it says Temple Ward and the number 12, mm-hmm. you see that there is a little bit of a plaza on the map there. Mm-hmm. That is triangle? Basically yeah, in the middle? That is Slaughterstone Square. Cool. I mean, this seems okay, like a good okay. place to go up. It's the perfect place to go up if we're trying to get to the market square. Just to clarify, uh, is the water level has always been the same in here? Did the water level change at all in this cistern? Like from the algae? Looking, looking around? Yeah. Yes, it looked like it was much higher. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you pass through enough of the sewers now that the several interconnected systems are probably all feeding into that main passageway. Mm. I mean, there were warnings not to go in Slaughterstone Square, but I mean, it's our best way to get to your clock tower. To be fair, it might be these fish people. That caused them not to go in? Well, I'm more concerned about what's feeding the fish people. There is a sudden crash and a scream as a corpse comes flying down from the well and is dropped with a large splash in the water. You can see... If you look up, you can see that in the sun, with the light coming down, whatever creature is up at the top is silhouetted. But there's this looming, gigantic figure covered in spikes, and it's reaching over its head with a gauntleted fist. You just see these two green glowing eyes. The creature is huge. It looms over the opening, which is 10 feet wide. So however big this creature might be, it could be 20 feet tall. Mm. And it looms down, it reaches over its head onto its back, and it grabs a body and it drops it. And then it reaches back and it grabs another body, produces another body, as if it's reaching into a sack on its back and drops it. Grabs another and drops it. And they just landed with like thuds at the bottom. Yeah. That's what I'm scared of. Okay, so it's not the fish people. So we need to get to the clock tower, but seemingly our best way there is to try to get past whatever that is. Does it stay or does it leave? It leaves after dropping five bodies down. I want to check out the bodies. Okay. Yeah. The water is about 10 feet deep as you get down to the bottom. How will you do that? How will you get there? Can I reach one of the bodies with, like... Um... The cistern is about 40 feet wide. Okay. Did any of them land... Are they floating? Yeah. The fresh ones? Yeah. Um, or what's the clo- is the, what's the closest one to me? Um, well, there's bodies in the, uh, all over the cistern. Of the fresh ones? The fresh ones, you have to swim out to get one. What, what are you hoping to do? Cause I want to see these fresh bodies because maybe they have some kind of clue as to what we're dealing with or who gives them to this thing. I take out my rope mm-hmm. and kind of create a lasso and I'm going to try to like fish one of the bodies. Do you want me to just fire an arrow at it with a rope tied to it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. After like three attempts of me, la- you're like, <laughs> I can tie an arrow. Just tie it. Yeah, okay. um, so I take my longbow out and I take a shot to try to get one of the bodies that he dumped in. Okay. Pulling the body closer towards you, this man was wearing full plate armor, and his body is covered in massive puncture wounds. At least a dozen of them, almost in a perfect grid-like pattern all across the front of his body. One of them, it looks like basically he walked into a wall of spikes and was impaled. But looking closer, he wasn't impaled until after he died. 
can I try to instead? Just... It looks oh, like sorry. he was killed by a cr- the fact that something grabbed him and crushed his rib cage. Can I try to determine what it was that punctured him? As I said, it looks like essentially someone dropped a portcullis or threw him against a wall of spikes. The way the puncture wounds are on his body, they're in a it's in a like, pattern like metal. I'm more intrigued by the fact that he was floating wearing plate metal. Is uh is it salvageable the armor? No. Uh, what about accessories like rings, necklace, mm. any sort of distinguishing like? Are you uh, looting the body? Well, mm-hmm. uh, looking for um, I want to look for like uh faction accessories. Looks like he might have been a mercenary or an adventurer of some kind. On his body, though, are two potions of greater healing. Ooh. There you go. That seem to have survived the fall. I feel okay. like you need to replenish <laughs> yours. Do, I do need them. Uh, if we do go up, I might uh, want to do so with caution when I stare at Pluto. Welcome to the world of Drakenheim. Mm-hmm. Everything should be done with caution here. I, I just mean that by the looks <laughs> of it, the fact that five well-armored individuals just seem to die at the hands of this thing. We are three, um, I would say it may be equally equipped, but still the, the odds don't seem in our favor. We're a bit more squishy. It's true. I, I wear nothing but a coat. Mm. The only thing I could think of in terms of helping out with this to figure out would be um, I have the option to um, my primeval awareness or I can use a spell slot to check if there's any aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, or undead in the area up to one mile. Do you think it's worth it? or? Well, we could always climb the staircase and by us I mean you guys because I'm monkey. <laughs> And you could just kind of Peek check out. out the top. There's just, also a lot of bodies here, and a lot of them still have their equipment. You could take some time to use some more arrows and <laughs> fishing. We create a system of fishing for bodies. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. I mean, let's. I think it's worth double checking the other bodies, especially that he just put in, because those will be the freshest, and those will give us more signs as to what that potential beast we'll create a pile for the fish people i I was gonna say we can play it off like we're helping them it's like here we'll make a pile of bodies and we'll remove their armor and weapons so that they're easier for you to take along and eat (laughs) yeah um it's i i I feel like whatever this hulking thing was the silhouette it might be too big to come down here which is to our advantage Mm. um I don't know what it is. I want to kill it. And if it's not right now, it could be later. But yeah. What if we outrun it? We could do that. Dash, dash away, dash away. Just we get up and we run to the clock tower. And and well, I mean, I'm sure we'll see this thing too. As fast as we can, we run to the clock tower. Yeah. What if you ask the fish people if there's another exit? What's the next closest exit? Maybe if it's not as... Yeah, yeah, yeah we can do that. What? I didn't even get the fish people's... Like, what's the name of the one that was speaking to me? Oh, my name is Slurpy. Slurpy. No, Slurpy. Slurpy. No, I, we, Slurpy. What this goes on. It? This goes on for like <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> Slurpy. As you learn the pronunciation of. I never learned the pronunciation. <laughs> the um, he says, as a reward for bringing back the remains of Blip Loop, you may take your pick of today's salvage. Amazing. Cool. What I'm are we going to start going through it? Yeah. Start mm-hmm. grabbing the bodies, and like, I mean, you guys can have the the meat after we're finished. Like looking oh, for like Lego, absolutely. We're so generous. What do we find on the the bodies mm. that we fish in? Well, on the body of a slain mage, 
you find a scroll of fireball. <laughs> Ooh, there you, you go. You, 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 I, I, <laughs> my, my ears perked up there. And scroll of fireball. on the body of a slain archer, oh. you find a peculiar looking crossbow. It is magical. Ooh. But instead of having a splot for a bolt, it has a reel of steel rope coming off the bottom of it and a large hook in place of a bolt. What? Oh gosh, I know who this is. This is this is George. I knew George. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. He would have wanted me to have this. <laughs> and this. And this. You just start picking up he would have. I will take it in his honor and do what I can. He also had a quiver of five magic arrows. <gasps> yes. And if you take the time to examine what you have found, this is none other than the grapple shot from the Dungeon Dude's Treasure Trove, Ooh. which you can get on the Dungeon Master's Guild <laughs> if you want to see the rules for it. 21 unique magic items. Yep. With fully illustrated art. I'm just doing self promotion. No, I like yeah. that. <laughs> As opposed to not. There are a few other armor. weapons and pieces of armor. Um, nothing quite of the quality of Tobias Crows. Most of it now has been ruined. But if you do want to pick up a few extra weapons, there's certainly almost anything here that you might want to pick up. I think I'll take. Got my weapon. Um. Can I throw a spear? Yeah. Maybe I'll take a spear. Yeah, you can throw a spe- spear or javelins. Maybe javelins. Yeah. Javelins. Yeah. How many javelins can I scrounge up? Decent ones. Five? Okay. Just need magnetic ones that just stick to your back. <laughs> Shum. Like a fridge. Yeah. Magnet. <laughs> um, anyways, the magic arrows and the... What's the grapple shot. Grapple shot. Well, we might have to add that one into uh, D&D Beyond. Cool. Yeah. Put in my notes for now. In our homebrew. Well, my old friend's weapons will not be used in vain. Something like that. Um, we've scrounged the bodies. So if you do want to use the uh, the gravel shot for anything... Veo tonight. Yeah. Um, it it is considered a crossbow, but rather than firing normal ammunition, it uh, has a built-in retractable grappling hook uh, and a thirty-foot-long metallic cord. So, as an action, you can fire it to an open surface within thirty feet of you, and it attaches to any surface made of wood or unworked stone. But it can't attach to metal, work stone, magical force, or anything else that I might deem as like a reinforced surface. It's got to have some purchase for it to stick into. Mm-hmm. Um, and then immediately once you fire it, it reels the line in and it pulls you through the air directly towards wherever you shot the hook. Amazing. You land safely within an, in an unoccupied square within five feet of the grappling hooks wherever you shot it. And then it detaches immediately. Sweet. Is that considered an action? It is an action to fire. Yep. Cool. Okay. Yep. But because it pulls you through the air, it, if you fire it, like you won't provoke an opportunity attacks or anything like that. You can't sh- if you shoot a creature with it, it just does damage. Mm-hmm. It doesn't embed into a creature, but it can be fired in that way. It's a kind of an improvised weapon. Still get hurt to be shot with. <laughs> How big is it? It's the size of a hand crossbow. Cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so fish do you people. Go, do, oh. Yeah, do we want to? I, I like both ideas. Um, running up and just booking it past. Um, what we're we gonna call him, Gigantor. <laughs> That's a fitting name. Slam, slam hands. We call him the Giver. The giver oh. slam hands. The Giver. I remember that book. Okay, the Giver. <laughs> um, and we could just run past. Like, if you guys want to check it out and, and and see if he's close by. I say we take a peek, and by we I mean our scout. <laughs> How often? Ask them how often the giver comes. How often does the giver come? Oh, very rarely. Sometimes now, 
It used to be in the young days, in the early days, there would be a rain of corpses from above as many came and tried to test their might against the giver in battle. But the giver slays them all without question and drops them down for us to feed upon their ruins. He is a generous giver, but a mighty, mighty protector too. So how often these days? Oh, it's been a while, at least a few weeks, since any bodies were dropped down here. I mean, so if we just, like, give it an hour... Unless he, like, lives in Slaughterstone Square, and as soon as something enters that area, he attacks it. Run away! Okay, I'll check it out. Okay. I'm gonna go up the steps, do my scouting work. You know, however dangerous it may be. Just, like, poke your head out, see if you can spot him. It was him nice anything. knowing you! <laughs> Okay, Van. <laughs> no, I move my way up the the ladder. This is how we get back to your hideout. But you know what? I'm I'm trying to go up the and the the stairs as quietly as possible, and I make it very clear before I start. I'm like, no noise. What's the What's the word that says come up? What's the signal? Pork chops. Pork chops. <laughs> oh, maybe can we use a a visual? <laughs> want to do, oh, um, how about I just wave you up? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. a good one. Wave. If I go like this, it means run away, okay? <laughs> you look for it. I'm going to turn off the drift globe. Perfect. Okay. So you head up the stairs. Mm-hmm. They spiral up and through a small stone building, open up and lead to a hatch that is closed at the surface. Okay. I am going to... Is there any hinges on this? Yes, okay. on the inside. I want to try to like slowly open the hatch if I can. Okay. You push it open very slowly and look out into Slaughterstone Square. I'm like, it's a rainy day eyes. and there's a light patter of rain falling on the street below. You remember this place. Slaughterstone Square is a great open plaza where there used to be a gallows built over top of the well that was here, mm-hmm. where criminals, murderers, and worse would be hung. Once in a while, a witch or a malfeasant wizard would be burned at the stake here. Mm-hmm. And for those honorable enough to be beheaded, there's a headsman's block that has been built in stone on a platform in front of the well. The well used to be where all the refuse of the executions drained down into the sewer system. But normally the bodies weren't actually disposed of down here. Slaughterstone Square is a wide kind of triangular square. Mm -hmm. Um, And the buildings along here rise up several stories. And every story of each building has a huge balcony on it. Because public executions were great entertainment in the heyday of Drakenheim. And the people that lived along Slaughterstone Square used to sell access to their balconies so you could get a good view of an execution. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> That's good. good for them. Box yeah. seats. Making money. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so these high steepled streets, um, all of the buildings along here are all very dour looking. They all have that steep point at the top, almost like judgmental hooded figures looking around the executed person. To stand in the center of Slaughterstone Square where you're opening the gate you actually feel like the houses and the windows that are around here are almost silently judging you and like you've been found wanting. Um, The streets though around here are completely deserted. Mm. There's the smash. You look out and you see the smashed remains of the gallows. Several of the benches and platforms around here and you can see sitting at the edge of the well maybe only about 50 feet from the door that you've opened up is a hulking machine it is perhaps 20 feet tall and you can see there's a large pair of smokestacks on its back and there is this kind of purplish smoke rising up out of the stacks. 
one of its arms is has a fist on the end of it, but then there is a massive headsman's axe kind of built out of the fist. The other other fist is almost built like a giant pincer. And the two and it's sitting down. Its whole body is covered in two foot long spikes. And there are several corpses that are impaled on its back. It's hunched over and it has this plated face that's meant to look like an executioner's mask. This machine was called the guillotine. Mm-hmm. Have I ever seen it before? Yes. It used to be the executioner of Drakenheim. Oh. Huh. Well. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Old familiar face, you know. Um, now, is it is it it is a machine, or does it have something inside it from the kind of what I know from the past? You just remember it being a machine. Hmm. Okay, I close. So it's fifty feet away. Mm-hmm. Close it. Sneak back down the stairs. You close it. You can see that there are bits of dismembered bodies and blood and gore. Like it was covered in blood and gore. Yeah. And there are other bodies all... There, there's remains of body parts, but entirely complete bodies appear to all be down here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so any of the complete bodies get tossed in. Mm-hmm. So I, I go down and I relay exactly what I saw to the rest of the group. So uh, the executioner's up there. I don't know if you ever know about that before, but he's a big machine, very spiky, very mean. I doubt I could ever afford to go to a public execution in the middle of Drakenheim, so... Um, but which way was it facing? Was it facing... To- Slightly away from the door. Okay. And which... Did, would we have to run past it to go to the clock? Like, where was the clock tower? Can we triangulate this? So. Mm. Oh, yeah, you... you- didn't check which direction the clock tower was. I'll go back up. <laughs> I go back up. Okay. <laughs> Make a stealth check. Nine. You open up the door and you look and you see that the machine is facing to the south and the clock tower is to the, is to the northeast. Mm-hmm. But as you close the gate, you slip and it comes down with a slam. Whoops. And the machine starts up, and you can hear it. You hear, as you rush down the stairs, you hear this battering on the grate. And this almost metallic screeching as the executioner suddenly comes to life as you rush away. And it, uh, and you can just hear this, this screeching, this metallic groaning, this reaching as the thing is stomping around and rushing around it and you can hear it clattering about all of you even down in the cistern and the fish people say oh have you angered the giver we don't go up that way it kills everyone it's a bit angry but i mean it's probably not going to stop sending you bodies if that's what you're worried about Mm. your food supply is still in good demand i have a plan we might have to wait a bit now for it to calm down okay I also have a plan. But you go first. I can perhaps, as long as it's facing away from us, and it was sitting, how how far away from you? About 15 feet? 50. 50 feet. 50? 50. Mm. 5 0. Oh. Why? You need to be close? I thought it was 15 feet, in which case I could cast Minor Illusion and make a sound 15 feet in front of it, like (laughs) somebody running, and then it would maybe follow the sound, giving us an opportunity to sneak past it. I mean, but theory. my minor illusion is only 30 feet. So that may not work. Mm. I don't think I have the distance to... I mean, I could still put the sound off to one side of it, making it walk possibly in a direction that the opposite the way that we want to go. Yeah. Giving us a possible opportunity. Pluto, what did you have? It depends on how aggressively far it chases the sound. I think my plan is completely dependent on how fast this thing is, which I don't know. 
but my plan was Veo with your ex- super speed yep. if you were to grapple hook the inside of the well come out of the well and get it to chase you <laughs> with your you super know this speed thing just like murders things right well my, that's why my hope is that you know what if it's fast if you're zephyr striking and agilitying and you run up a, a house or something then we could burst out the 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 hatch but then what if it hears you and you're not as fast but that's why it's all depends on that one condition how fast it is because if it's like as fast as we are if you can get it far enough away where it's just chasing you but it can't catch you yeah. we wait till it's far enough away we get out and then we book it another way and then you lose it and be back up with what us. If, but that's, uh, that's risky. It's well, super risky. What if we combine the plans? Yeah. So she waits down here because the thing was sitting by the edge of the well, right? It was. So if it returns to sit by the edge of the well, me and Pluto go up the stairs. We creak open the lid. We use minor illusion to lure it away from the well. Okay. You pop out the well. It turns back around and sees you. It now is further away from you. Meaning it has to catch up to you, but you're going to run... Run away. Away. But then it's going to follow me. And then we're going to escape, <laughs> and you're going to escape using your nimbleness and ability to climb. Now the final... I feel option. like I don't get a good outcome in this. I get chased by this crazy machine either way. Man, yeah. Rat yeah. food was so much more into these you plans. Know, and yeah. totally just Wait, what about the rat prince? Into... Did he help us out? <laughs> oh, rat prince... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Distract Prince. <laughs> How fast are you? Oh, I very quick. Yes, yes. Like, I run very, very fast. Very, very sneaky. The most quick? Like very quick? What you want me to do? Like faster than a death dealing machine? I want you to outrun a machine. He looks at you and says, You mean that machine? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He, he says, no. <laughs> That's what I thought. I will not do it. Okay. Well. You want me be bait? You want me run up there, be bait? Get eaten? No. Get torn apart? No. It not even eat what it kill. I'm sorry. I thought... <laughs> I thought <laughs> It you just were, kill, kill, kill. I thought you were fast. You said you were fast. I, I fast, but... But what if I not fast enough? It's not really no, like it's it's a machine. It's gonna be slow. Well, you know what we can do. I mean, we could use that, the that machine. It not matter. It get you once, you dead. <laughs> yeah, true. We, well, we could also like. I think we need to test it out a little bit. So, what if we go up through the the crack when it like settles around, and then use your minor illusion and like see how fast it goes, <laughs> like study it a little okay. bit. The research. Other, We're doing research. We're the other do option research. we have is we could just continue and try to find another way up. Oh, yeah, we could, yeah. Either by... But I can see the clock tower. We could find another safer route, or we could backtrack, fill the the caverns again, and see if there's a way we could I don't know, go I through the regular Rat Prince way. Pluto Jackson wanting to play it safe. Nah. Pluto <sighs> Jackson really wants to murder this giant mechanical monster. I mean, I bet you couldn't even outrun it with all your armor. <laughs> We're going. <laughs> <laughs> I sheath my sword. Let's go. <laughs> We're going. I'm just like, r- I'm ready to run. Like, I want to go up and not to fight it, to run away. How far is the stairway and the grate, the, the hatch that leads up from the opening of the well? The, the well opening is 10 feet wide, and the cistern itself is 40 feet in diameter. So the staircase spirals on the outside of the cistern, so it's about 30 feet to the well on the surface. Okay. So the staircase comes up, it's like 30, 30 feet. Yeah. Like, I feel like we've, we've, maybe you could like minor illusion at the well something, so then he goes and 
and attacks the well, and then we go up and run. Because he would have to get 50 feet to us if we were running in the opposite direction. We don't even necessarily have to run towards the tower. We just have to run away, away. from that thing. <laughs> we just have to run away. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to go up the stairs, and I'm going... To, it has the, has the banging and like yeah. crashing stop. took about half an hour. Okay, yeah. I go up, and I want to open it a crack. Okay. And I'm going to cast Minor Illusion. He's 30 feet away, so I'm going to cast it. He's 50. He's, 50. he's sitting right back down where he was sitting okay. before. Okay, so he's not sitting at the well. He's sitting a bit past the well. Essentially, he's sitting on the opposite side of the well from the from the staircase up. Okay. Um, although, if I cast the sound in the well, then he'll turn towards us. What if you cast it? So if the well is 50 feet in front of us, what if you cast it 30 feet to like our right. what time is it i was like what time is it's it? the afternoon i thought you meant in real life because um, i was gonna say we could you could use like darkness and we could just like walk through darkness i can do both right i was hoping to reserve as much of this for the uh clock tower yeah, yeah. um so i mean if we can just run past it uh so this door it, so with it open a crack, I see I see him sitting there. If I look the other way, how f- how close are like the closest buildings? At least a hundred feet away. The plaza is about a two hundred foot diameter. Could you like right launch a firebolt at one of the buildings? I mean, uh, what's your what's your most the spell that provides the most? Uh, can you light a Can you light distance. a building on fire to create a distraction? That would be good. Unless it leaves a trail. If it shows where it's coming from, I'd be that, That's the thing is you might see where it's shot from. Yeah. So I think our best bet is Minor Illusion. Yeah. Um, do you Minor Illusion a thing rather than a sound? I can. I can do either. Yeah. Because then if he sees something, can it run away? Can it move? This Minor Illusion? I mean, it can't move further than my 30-foot range on it. Can make it run the opposite way of Towards us. him? Make it run the opposite way of us, and then when we get it, we run the like the complete one eighty. Um, I don't want it to know where I can only make it now. small, so it can't be a person. No, okay. Oh, you know rat. what? How how tall are halflings? Big enough that you could make an illusion of a halfling with minor illusion. I am I okay? I conjure up a halfling <laughs> who starts running around um, off to the right side from where we are of the okay. well. It's a silent illusion. Yeah, but it's in his periphery. Okay. He can see it. And we're going to run. How far away do you conjure it from him? Um, so I can do... So if I'm here, he's he's like sitting over here. I'm mm. going to conjure it like over here. Okay. You conjure the illusion of a, of a half lane. And the massive machine lumbers to its feet and walks over to it. And it sees it, and it brings its axe up, and it smashes down on the illusion, and then raises the axe up and see and it like the axe like smushes the illusion, and then it lifts its arm up and sees the illusion is still there, and smashes its arm down again. Lifts its arm up, sees the illusion is still there. It smashes it down again. Run, run! Lifts its okay, arm we up. Go, we go, we go, we go. <laughs> we run in the opposite direction. So if it's to the right, we're like dashing to the left. So we're like, open the thing, run, go, go, go. But quietly. We, 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 we like <laughs> stealth run. We, we. Are you going to be stealth? Because if you're running, there's no way to be stealth. What's the fastest we, half movement? Uh, Yeah, it would have your movement. If you I'd run. rather get yeah. away. There's... Book it. I, okay. I zephyr. No. Wait, I'm not Zephyr striking yet. If it sees us and we're running, okay. I'm gonna hold off on Zephyr striking. So you run out of the of the s- sewer hatch as it's smashing down on the ground. <laughs> so scared. <laughs> timing, timing Roll the hatch opening with oh the first gosh. with the first. Okay, guys, this is this is in combat. This is. Oh, okay. 20. Okay. <laughs> because this is the chase, I'm not gonna put it down on the map. So we're gonna okay. do this in our minds. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Dale. Twenty six. Twenty. Sebastian. Uh, 21. Pluto? 16. You all beat the the machine, the okay. executioner. This creature is known as a cadaver collector. Oh. 
Oh, it seems so creepy. Um, so as you burst up out of the sewer hatch, the machine looks up from the illusion and sees all of you, and you hear this wrenching, screeching sound. It's like it's like wrenched metal and gears turning as it sees more people running out and it turns to chase after you with this lumbering kind of jog. It goes, junk, 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 as it moves forward. Veo, what are you going to do? I'm going to Zephyr Strike <laughs> and, and r- run away. No. The Rat Prince is <laughs> running gonna, as well. And I'm going to um, use... As I do it, my feline agility. Hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm getting pretty far. I'm getting at least to the first building. Okay. <laughs> As you run out, the rat prince says, I see you all later. I stay down here. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, the- I'm and across he- the, the way. Sebastian, before. what are you going to do? <laughs> dash, uh, dash. How far is it from me? It is 90 feet away from you. I'm going to just... Dash. Okay, you run. So, uh, Pluto? I dash. <laughs> all right. So you all run. The cadaver collector starts running towards you. It is at full speed. It's about as, as fast as Pluto. <laughs> 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 but as it comes forward, you see you. this green energy collect around it. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, there I- the green energy emanates from the corpses that are impaled on its back and you see several screaming green visages start leaping forward out of the 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 machine and running along with it and they all scream and you can hear all of these ghostly visages say no no you've got to run you've got to run and one of the the visages say please don't leave me here don't leave me here and all of these ghostly forms yelling out the last words that they ever said uh, they ever experienced <laughs> Sebastian <laughs> Sebastian also starts yelling no no you've got to run you've you hear, hear run. another one saying oh they've killed George it's ripping him in half George, <laughs> George. don't look back poor George George oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no. and it, as you as you see it, as it runs forward all of its vents open up as well and this all these gases and fumes of delirium are shooting out from all of its vents as it rushes forward towards all of you. Wait a second. What? <laughs> I never did that before. No, it did not. Ooh. Oh, You're no. like, how far ahead of us are you? Oh, I, I mean, how far does your dash go? Uh, 60. Um, so I did 80. <laughs> Carry the five, three thousand feet. <laughs> I think one twenty is my three miles. <laughs> or one You're three so miles. I think we, I got to the edge of the the, the hundred. Like. We start running, and me and Pluto are just like grabbing at each other, like. <laughs> Printing, and you're just like gone and we keep like looking behind us being like no 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 don't look back don't look back just okay. keep running and you're I running all like, run, pull, run. pull out I'm gonna have each of you make a constitution saving throw oh no six <laughs> fourteen twenty three Okay, you two are fine. You continue to run forward and you actually catch up to Veo who's panting <laughs> as she's given this all out run um, and you continue to rush forward. You're almost at the edge of Slaughterstone Square. You can see the Market Square and the Clock Tower looming in the distance. The massive cadaver collector continues to go forward. Junk, junk, junk. As the spirits begin to rush forward towards e- each of you. Um, and one of the, the specters are much faster than the actual cadaver collector itself. And they fly forward, their grasping hands coming right up towards your faces saying, Please, don't leave me! As one of them reaches into Sebastian. Into? Yeah. Uh Uh-oh. And it reaches forward and it seems like it's close enough that if you continue moving, it'll get an opportunity attack against you. It's your turn. Oh. How far away is the edge of Slaughterstone Square? That's probably another two or three rounds of all out running. Oh. My lungs are burning, but I'm going to keep booking it. Okay. The 
Spectre reaches out, scoring a critical hit no. against you, Sebastian. Um. Make a constitution saving throw. 12. You succeed. <laughs> In any case, you still take 20 necrotic damage. Oh, God. I want to take a swing. At least your hit point maximum wasn't reduced by that much. Because you made your constitution saving throw. Oh, really? Oh. Can I take a swing at the specter? Yes, you can. For for attacking my friend? Yep. Ten? That's a miss. Okay. Swings right through its incorporeal form. Ah, Do you all continue to run? I'm going to continue to run. (laughs) I'm going to continue to dash. Let me just double check. I'm like, I am. It touched you. It touched it, me, and I'm like, I'm so pale, and I look so sick, and I'm also like heaving, and I'm. Oh so I still, I'm still, I get 90, 90 feet on my dash. Okay, because and the of two my of you strike. managed to get uh, another sixty feet away. The um, it is the and the cadaver collector, junk. Junk, 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 <laughs> running forward inexorably. <laughs> Today is a scary right. day. Well, a, a piece of, of one of the corpses on its back kind of sloughs off and uh. fall like f- like splits apart. So there's some entrails uh. following as it as it rushes forward. Um, the specters continue to pursue you, rushing forward even more. And now one of them is behind Paluto. Uh. All of you can make uh, constitution saving throws. 18. 19. 18. Okay, you're all good. So, Veo, from before, you have one level of exhaustion. Ooh. Okay, just so you know. Where? Oh. Sebastian, uh, uh, sorry, Paluto, as you continue to run forward, one of the specters, its tinging hands le- reach out towards you, and it gets an 18 to hit. He misses. <laughs> <laughs> You can feel them. They continue to scream out. It's like going around my they, shoulders. And, and it comes up to you and it's like whispering in your ear, please don't leave me. You have to save me. You oh, have gross, to save gross, me. Gross, 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 gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, is the last round of running. Keep running. <laughs> we are almost. What are you going to do? I, I book it. Okay. Book it, yeah. One more set of constitution saving throws. Come on. 16. 12. 24. You're all fine. (laughs) Breathing heavily, you burst down the street into Market Square, and as the massive cadaver collector gets to the edge of Slaughterstone Square, it stops abruptly. Oh, really? And the specters come right back to it, back towards it, and it looks at you with fire and hate in its eyes. I feel like we don't even get a chance. And now you know why you don't go to Slaughterstone Square. (laughs) I. No. I I feel like we just keep running. Like, I keep running. And I'm I'm, I'm weaving. Like, we're weaving through, like, lefts and rights and go through a door, go at the back door. I know this part now, so I know where to take us. I'm (laughs) like, this is my guys. I want to say that I did something brave, but I think in the situation that I'm in, like, part of me is like, I want to turn around and make fun of it, but I'm just like, no. that's it almost it, killed me just by like that was the scariest looking at me. That'll be the time yeah. that so it comes out of the square think, and still yeah. chases us. I think like once once I notice we're free, I just like dive onto the ground and start just like <laughs> <laughs> Your soul is like touch you you were haunted. Something lived inside you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you're at now the south end of the market square, the wide plaza, the deserted streets, and all you can do is scream and laugh that I'm, you are alive. Yeah, it's like that weird it's the delirium talking now. Yeah, is, this, is this the haze? Oh man! I just like I go into a fetal position and start <laughs> crying. I'm on defense, like I'm looking around constantly, like 360ing, making sure there's like not a specter that's like following us still. I am so exhausted. I'm just like. Uh, I'm done. Let's find a let's find a little house to kind of hide in. Uh, I don't like know. Broken. I, I crawl to the nearest house. <laughs> like something just to sit down for a moment and catch our breath. 
Yeah. You step into the edges of Market Square. The Market Square is the largest open plaza, even larger than Slaughterstone Square. You see a sea of ruins in front of you. Ruined market stalls from the massive open-air market, which once was the heart of commerce, trade, and life in the city. This is the south part of the market. The stalls are smashed, many of them burned over. You can see the corpses of the people of Drakenheim still scattered about, just like the, as they were on the last day of the city 15 years ago. Some of them are a little more than ash, some of them untouched from the passage of time. The south end of the market square is the great clock tower. The large stone limestone building towering up looking down with the massive glass and iron clock face. Its high steepled towers and leering gargoyles. Once your sanctuary in the city, you can see how its highest tower just pokes above the haze which suffuses and rests over the entirety of the market square. You scream, laugh in exhaustion. The, la the echo carried in the emptiness of the market square. You have survived Slaughterstone Square and you are just outside the clock tower. That's where I think we'll leave it for the rest of the night. We have enough. We've had enough fright for one night. <laughs> oh, that was scary. I need healing. <laughs> <laughs> you need a quick nap. I need a nap. I need a coma. Just a small one. Listen, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, so. Yeah, the egg was my soul. I, I, I like to think. And it's broken. I'm very <laughs> brave, but when I saw that plate mail was just punctured like like a three hole punch it was like there's Pluto's too smart for it he had to book it he there was knew. no way but I will find my revenge I will take down the executioner and I will carry his axe as a trophy oh, we just need to get up on a I'm really tough right now <laughs> on a roof when, when he's not close by <laughs> he's not hearing this right he's, he's, hearing this? he's right behind you <gasps> no, I don't even know I'm no. yeah he's all yours I'm gonna cry more. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, congratulations, that's, friends. We escaped. That's a plan. Straight flawless. out of my nightmares. Yep. We flawless we plans. out we out maneuvered a giant machine. That poor halfling. <laughs> 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 that was what helped. Got us through. Yeah. So, next week, the clock tower. The red dot. I will take my revenge. <laughs> we, will, we will destroy Damn. your enemies, Veil. Yes. Furry. Or sorry. Feathered. Fine. The feathered. Feathered fury. Oh. I'm ready for it. Awesome. So that wraps it up for this evening. Thank you so much to our cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe. I can't promise you I won't scare you that much again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's Drakenheim for you. <laughs> That's Drakenheim, baby. Uh, and thank you so much to Kyle for running things behind the scenes tonight and our producer Clayton as well for all their great work managing and putting things together and keeping things organized. Uh, if you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, check out our Patreon. Uh, you can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for Dungeon Masters and guides for players. We're actually embarking on a really cool new series now where we're going to look at some of the best and worst spells in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. So we have a few posts on our community page on YouTube where you can chime in with your thoughts. We're going to be asking some questions and some polls, finding out what people think are some of the coolest spells in the game and what are some of the stinkers. Uh, you can also find prior episodes from the Drakenheim campaign available for your viewing pleasure there, mm -hmm. including wonderful little interviews with each of our cast members and myself as we talk about the background of the characters and the setting. Uh, tonight's game session audio was again provided by Tabletop Audio. It's amazing and it sets a nice tone. Yes, and the narration of the introduction video uh, was performed by 100 Years Boar. Schmeeple. <laughs> 
Um, our game accessories were generously provided by Axe and Shield. Uh, he makes some incredible... Um, our cool initiative tracker. Our initiative tracker. Also, he makes some really awesome uh, battle razors and things like that. Uh, check it out. And all of our lovely terrain uh, is by Dwarven Forge. Uh, and we use miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids uh, for a play. We've been con- collecting them for a long time, so we really enjoy these minis. Thank you so much for watching uh, us again, and we will see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. Bye.